Hey there, hi there, ho there, it's me, Bear the Gen X GM, hanging out with GM Cody Yield, Geek Legion of Myth, Malachi of the OS, our intellectual quandary, and Hungar, the goat man, the goat man. It's like Pan, He's he's got a little pipe and he runs around the woods seducing women, it's very disturbing, watch out. Uh, and we are back for what is officially no longer a session zero, but the first session of um codex albana now i've got audio coming across even though i think i muted all the channels i'm on so has someone else got audio that i'm not thinking i have I no video it. even up nope ah there it is found it okay i had one that was of all five channels i had one that was not yet muted so there's 12 of you here thank you all for showing up we'll see how many people show up during the course of this live stream but it doesn't matter if there's 12 of you one of you or 1200 of you we're here to play some Palladium Fantasy. How are you guys all doing? Uh, fine, fine, thank you, Beth. Fine. It looks like right, we've already got some people showing up. Yeah, we do. We do. We got people strolling in, which is great stuff. Uh, for once, I'm actually leading the numbers over to the Legion of Myth. That's a strange experience. <laughs> I said people to you. I hope they're watching on your channel. Nope, I got at least one person watching on mine. <laughs> You have, okay, Watch according to this, you have three on yours, 11 on mine, two on Yield Geek, and two on Hungar, none on Cody, none on Malachi. I think we should send them all to Malachi and Cody's streams instead, and they should subscribe while they're there. But that's neither here nor there. So for those of you who watched last time when we did our session zero, hope you remember what happened. It's been a month. We've completely forgotten. So of course, we've decided that we're just going to make it up as we go. And all of our characters will have completely new personalities, which should be really fun. I believe we were all doing a outrageous French accents last time we played, right? And Russian royalty, was that what we were doing? I think no. something about Fabergé it. eggs or something. I can't remember. No, last time our heroes came together at the Three Sisters Battlefield Tournament, which is held in the Kingdom of Davin on the island of Albana as one of the Pendrick Commonwealth realms. And uh, a little mage wise man by the name of uh, Laurelyn Lockwald managed to uh, collect, shall we say, a group of malcontents, including uh, the Palabrian Knight Sir Gerard de Vere, the Calefi bowman and peasant boy Athane kirby uh a wandering um i believe you said you were uh fellation um uh, monk i guess is what we're calling you named philip an ishmiri young knight named navari ishmitar and they managed at the end to rescue a uh, former ostrati templar named uh, Gerard Bacht, and they also managed to pick up a beast folk and a Jitto, or rover, or gypsy for real world terms, a uh, young girl who is, uh, claims to be a seer, as I recall. Now, uh, you had a little run-in with uh, the Ostrati who were crucifying people and uh, may or may not have slaughtered an entire encampment of free merchants that you had celebrated the night before with as a revenge against you being, shall we say, all up in their grill. You did manage to save one or two of them that hadn't yet been crucified, including the lovely Lady Gislaine, who was then uh, heading back to Othay because she realized that this was the end of her little voyage over to this world. And uh, the um, Devonic Knights, who, under order of the King of Davon, who hosts the tournament, banned the Ostrati, uh, which, by the way, has a massive political repercussion because by banning them from the grounds outside the, uh, the tournament, he's banning them from the Kingdom of Davon at that point in time. So that can't possibly not cause problems later on for everybody. But with that... You knew you had to start uh, following the quest of the Pendrick Cycle as you're going to head north into the ancient and long since lost kingdom of Escane. We pick up not long after where we left off. I assume you didn't just turn around from the crucifixion and just start walking north. I assumed you thought maybe you would get... Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. I figured you guys would maybe... Uh, here's momentum for the fight. Okay, there's one re-roll. Uh, who wants to keep track of that for me? Who wants to keep track of the re-rolls that are bought for you? I got, I've Good. got a note. I've okay, got, so I've got a note. There, there's been, so if you guys buy with the Super Chat, 
will say two dollars or more you buy one re-roll that they can use at some point during the game and cash in as uh, one of them as a group um anyway so i assumed you guys weren't going to head straight north just start walking in your gear you were going to maybe get some of your stuff or what was the plan what was what was your goal at this point I'd say we probably need to gather if we're going to go on a large, uh, long, arduous journey. We probably need to gather gather some provisions and such, right? I would you guys can talk, discuss get... this out of character. I mean, this can be a, a quick behind the scenes chat between the players how they want to handle it. I would be trying to get back to um, the Palabrian camp um, uh, and see if it is possible for me to uh, get, my, get my horse. Because mm -hmm. that might come that might come in useful, and certainly um, things like my spare clothing, my, my home comforts, my bedroll, um, things that I personally need to stay looking. Uh, Princess Vespa I... over here. <laughs> <laughs> and Hungar, you're not allowed to buy your own re rolls, man. That's you said two dollars cool. for re roll. <laughs> All right, Hungar's playing dirty pool, but. <laughs> I'll allow it this time, but no more. One, you only got the one, buddy. Uh, okay, so Sir, Sir Devere is going to head back to the Palabrian camp to try and gather his stuff. Is uh, Laurelin doing anything in particular? Or is he just waiting everybody out? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask around the Gypsy camp and see if they would mind uh, sparing us some provisions for the journey. So you're going to see the Jito about getting yeah. some uh, provisions, okay? Kirby, is he doing anything in particular, or is he just ready to go? So. I had actually kind of already moved away from these folks, uh, if you remember the at the end there, and I shot the arrow that you know killed the guy in the cross. So if they don't come back out this way, I'm nervous. So Gringog, I'm, I'm sorry, hang real quick, Gringog. Only super chats on my channel are going to count for rerolls. If you buy them on their channel, really nice that you got them a gift, but it's only going to count over here because you know I'm greedy. Uh, anyway, sorry, keep going. Uh, so so at, at least as of the end of that, I'm a, a good couple hundred meters away from them. Um, are you leaving them? Are you wandering well, I'm not, away? I'm, I'm standing. My character be standing confused right now. I'm like, I just killed a man. This can't be good. Um, let's go. And then I see them just kind of mulling around, like, uh, so. Okay, so you're, I'll, you're, I'll, he's hesitant. Okay. Yes, yes, confused. Okay, so Philip, I'll, what are you doing? I'm going to go get the young boy. Uh, the young boy, Kirby. Oh, so you're going to be with Kirby? Okay, so you're going with. And Kirby. I'm going to tell him that we need to wait. Up hold it. Money. Hold it. Hold the thought. We're just figuring out where everybody is, and then we'll start. I promise. I promise. Don't worry. I'm just going to get the lay of the land. Uh, Iman, what is Navari doing? I feel like I should go and speak to my father and let him know where I'll be going, because otherwise they'll be worried, and then obviously grab a few things from the camp as well while I'm there. Okay. And then Mr. Bacht, the guy who's wearing a pair of pants right now, nothing else. What is he doing? <laughs> I'm looking around trying to find work to get some coin to get the necessities okay. I need. So as we pick up, Kirby wanders off like he's like trying to leave, looking back at the others, looking confused, and Philip sees that and heads over towards him. Bach just turns around and wanders off into the crowd. Um, the Beast Man will follow mm, probably Bach because he knows his smell best because they were in a cage together. So he's just this, this sort of falling, which is causing commotion because now a half-naked man and a beast animal man are wandering off into the crowd. Uh, which you will see all of that, Laurelin, as you're sort of turning towards to head toward the Jito crowd. Navari's heading back to his family's encampment, and Devere is heading over to the Palabrian. So we'll start with Philip and Kirby, since they're the least focused of the other three who have determined directions to go. Kirby, we need to go find some horses if we're going to be leaving this place. I don't feel like walking. I think it just started a war. It's okay. What has happened? I don't, I don't I don't I don't want to be in a war. That's why I'm here. We won't be in a war. We're leaving. Remember? You're going back. We the the mate said we've got some mystical thing that we've got to do. So Yeah, he said something you've got to do. No, he said you. That's okay. why I'm getting you to make sure that you don't leave the group. We need to go find horses so we can take care of this. Okay. You guys notice the guy that you saved and the beast man are wandering off into the crowd. I holler at them. The beast man will turn. <laughs> hey, Gerard. Where are you going? Muted Melody. 
right. I'm not exactly in, in uh looks like I'm gonna be going anywhere soon. I need to get money. Well, we need horses too. Well, possibly, uh, possibly Sir Gerard, he's quite well off. Maybe some of his people wouldn't mind lending us some arms and armor for Gerard here and uh, maybe a few horses. You can know, be he, slaves. Can, he could clothe you because he is just a fancy uh, clothing merchant. Yes, what do you think, Sir Gerard? Would you um, be willing to help out the group? I'm guessing you're calling me back as... Uh, yeah, he's I'm, walked off. He's you turning yeah. like, what do you think? Man? Oh, Jesus. He's, oh, Pella Arist. He's walked off down the court. Like, he's heading on his way. And that's when you realize Navari has wandered off, too. And, you know, everybody just seems to be going their ways really quickly with no plan to regroup. Um, you, you need me? I was just going to get myself ready for the uh, for the, for the journey. Yeah, Sir Gerard, um, I think we need... Possibly some horses, provisions, and it looks like our man Bart here probably needs some weapons and armor. And, and a shirt. You are, and a shirt would be nice. And seeing that you're um, well to do, maybe you could help him out. As he says that, you realize the Devonic Knights have sort of formed up off to your side, and that one night that you've been talking to the entire time, so sort of goes, right. Uh, thank you for your help, but uh, I think uh, you lot should be. Uh, Heading on your way. You're no longer welcome here today. And uh, I would say for your safety, you uh, move on. That was Just exactly our plan, it's sir. It's our plan, yes. We're looking. I'm getting well, my then horse. get to it. I'm getting my horse. Go on, then. Go. Take this lot with you. Come. Come. Um, I get a horse. My, um, my friends. Um, I'm not sure if. Um, are you. Of the, the skill, the the breeding required to tame a, a properly thoroughbred horse, Gerhard? Maybe. Not sure. I mean, what experience do you have in the saddle? Uh, hang on a second. I have some. Some, I mean, uh, be a little more specific than that. I mean, I, I grew up in the saddle. It was all part of my training, all part of um, becoming. Um, That's why he a... walks funny. We'll assume you're having this conversation as you guys are walking towards the camp. Navari, are you going with them or are you breaking off to go talk to your people? I'm going, I'm breaking off. I'm going to go to back to my camp, speak to my father. Are, are you telling them this or are you just walking off? I'm just walking off. Okay. Navarre, where are you going? Oh, uh, I'm just going to speak to my father. I'll be back shortly. I have to inform okay. him of my whereabouts, otherwise I'll be worried. We will well, we'd be, be worried if you wandered away without telling us. We'll be at the Palabrian encampment. Got it. I'll meet you there. Thank you. Um, I, I, I feel I must make... I don't know. Um, are we? Am I close to my my people's encampment now? No, that's the other side of the fair from where you are. Oh, joy. You got a hell of a walk. <laughs> I'm going to be mulling in my head how I'm going to explain how um, I suddenly acquired all these people of lesser status with me, and uh, how quite how what, what my people are going to think when I walk into the camp with mm -hmm. um, Bocht. Um, yeah. When was the last time you bathed? Shortly before I got locked up. And how long ago was that? A couple weeks. Oh, oh. Um, how about this, we... Sir Gerard? So you don't feel um, embarrassed by your situation. We will meet you in the gypsy camp, and you acquire what you can in the Palabrian camp. We'll all meet up in the gypsy camp and head out as soon as possible. I'm not sure you're quite getting it, though, because uh, you mentioned that people need to acquire arms and armor and clothing. I cannot simply pick up those items and assume they're going to fit. 
Well, take Box with you. I think it would be easier to explain with your spot. He hasn't bathed. He hasn't bathed for several weeks. Look at him. Well, don't you have bats in your cap? I have what in my cap? A bath. We haven't got time for him to have a bath. Did you hear the Devonians? Um, does anybody happen to have any? Um, is is there a stall nearby which sells fragrances? Uh, you know, sort of pomanders. You're pretty sure in the market area there'd be someone selling perfumes and stuff like that. Um, here, Bach, a coin. Buy yourself some perfume. So he hands you some uh, Palabrian brass and, uh, um, yeah. Just make sure you douse yourself in it, especially under there, you know, the, those bits mm -hmm. that are particularly um, ripe. And uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait here a moment for you. All right. Going to doing it. So the the beast man follows at your heels, like 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 he does. He's you're the only one he seems to be trusting. So he's following you, uh, which of course is now causing people to scream yeah. and women to faint, and it's just causing a whole uproar as you head into the uh, the uh, market area. But you do eventually find a vendor um, of perfume and scented oil, and he sort of looks at you and he looks at the beast guy and he's like, um. I, I, I can help you, yes? I just tell him looking for just something to make me not so right. Uh, so. Okay, okay, okay. And he's just sort of, you know, keeping one eye on you. He, he digs around and he brings up a little pot with a wax seal on the top of it. You know, this, this, this will do good. You smell uh, very good, very good. Give him the coin. Oh, very generous, thank you. <laughs> And he just sort of like, then he's, oh, I'm close. And he's like shuttering up the thing and like he wants nothing more to do with you all of a sudden. But you've got a pot of perfume now and uh, you and your and your beast friend can go where you please. Where all right. Go. I'm going to go some play out, place off to the side and get this on and meet up with uh, Gerard. Okay. The entire time you're lathering and bathing yourself with these scented oils the beast man is just looking at you like a dog that's heard funny noises it, it cannot seem to comprehend what you're doing uh it seems really weird and then it gets a <laughs> it doesn't like the smell of it and it sort of stays a couple of feet back from you because you now smell really really like basically you smell like sandalwood is what you smell like oh. right now. you basically doused yourself in sandalwood oils uh, but with that you head back over to find devere waiting patiently for you with kirby and philip uh, Laurelyn, you were heading to the rover camp, yes? Yes, we will be okay. at the rover camp, Sir Gerard. We will meet you there. So by we, who are you taking with you? Uh, whoever's following. I right. assume the young girl following me. Who's following Laurelyn to the rover camp? Who's following Devere to the Palabrian camp? Kirby, let's go to the rover camp with the mage. I guess I'll go in that direction as well. All right, so you three head to the rover camp. Uh, the rovers are quite happy to see you. Uh, they're more than, you know, they're, 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 they're a little shocked, you know, and you've got Esmeray with you, so she's kind of like, you know, she does all the translating needed for you guys, and uh, you will be doing business with them, and you know, it, it's fine. They're happy to help you out because, you know, you've got Esmeray, and obviously she's been chosen for something, so they're going to support her. Devere, you and uh, Bacht and the little beast boy uh, wind up walking up to the Palabrian camp. It was a good 15-minute walk across the, uh, the grounds. Maybe you were running things over in your head, whatever it was you were doing. Uh, and when you get up, the couple of the guards who are sort of at you know, the front of the, the camp entrance look at you, and you rank them. So they, they're just like, night, sir. And they sort of step aside to let you in, but you can feel a tension coming off. Um, is, is is there a problem here? Sir, no, sir. Just watching the door, sir. No, watching the yeah. gate, sir. Um, these two here, they are they, they are my guests for the time I'm Very here. good, sir. Very good. Sir, sir Albert uh, asked us to inform you when you arrive that you should report to him immediately, sir. Sir Albert? Yes, sir. The Knight Commander, sir. Yes, sir. What does he want? 
Okay, very well, very well. Um, we've got to head over to Sir Albert's uh, tent. Uh, if you two could just wait outside, I'll, I'll make sure the guards there know that you are not going to cause trouble. At least you smell um, yeah. adequate now. Uh, make sure you keep the beast thing uh, just close by you. Um, but we'll have no, we'll have no, we'll have no outbursts. And um, I'm going to see if I can arrange. At least some weaponry and maybe a little bit of clothing for you. Um, do you have any preference as to what you'd like to uh, employ, weapons-wise? Longsword. Longsword. Very so well. uh, the Templars use two-handers, just in case you're. Oh yeah. Not. Well, yeah, they use the Y-hander, but I, you're pretty sure he won't have one because Calabrians aren't Y-hander people; they're sword and board people, right? <laughs> So yes, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find a sword. I can't promise it'll be as good as mine, but uh, it should be it should be adequate. We don't use poor weaponry here, um, so uh, just don't cause any trouble. I won't. Okay. So Knight Commander Albert's tent is quite large. It's one of those military sort of encampment tents. It is the largest tent in the Palavrian encampment. And there are two young knights standing at the front, and when you show up, they sort of nod to you and give the other two a sort of a side eye and uh, look back at you. Devere. Good morning. Good sir, morning. you're expected, sir. Uh, but so not these two. Um, they are my guests. Can you just um, make sure they're okay here? They'll, they'll yes, cause sir. you no trouble. They'll cause yes, you sir. no trouble. I, I give you my word on that. Very good, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and you're allowed to make small talk with them if you wish. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Of course, sir. Very well. Very well. So he walks in, they look at each other, and then one sort of awkwardly goes, uh, Lo Lovely weather we're having, eh? Yeah, right then. And they feel they've done their duty of making small talk. Um, so you walk into Lord, uh, Knight Commander Lord Albert's, uh, Albert's tent. Uh, Al I said Albert, it should be Albrick. Uh, Albrick's tent is opulent, to say the least. Lord Albrick was one of Wardergern's most trusted generals back during Wardergern's rebellion. He is a large walrus of a man. When he was a younger knight, he was considered hell on wheels, but the last 20 years have caught up with him in the midsection, and he's very jolly, and he has a big handlebar mustache. It's quite white, and uh, you know, behind his back, people call him the walrus, but no one will to his face. Um, and uh, he's sort of looking over a board, and he sees you know, and he goes, ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, come, come, come. Clear the room. And all the others sort of look at each other. Now! And they step off, leaving you alone with them. Wine? So he looks at you and he says, Wine? Oh, you're offering. Um, yes, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Excellent. Give me one as well while you're at it. He sits down in his overstuffed chair. <laughs> I look around instead of looking around for my, for, for my squire or someone to, and realise that there's nobody else there, and yeah. uh, uh, mutter to myself as I as I pour a couple of uh, large cups of wine. To bring them over. There you go, sir. Have a seat, boy. Have a seat. Yes, sir. You lost your fucking mind, Devere. Mm, not as far as I know. Taken with madness, then. Possibly. Under Possibly. a witch's curse, perhaps? No, not as far as I know again. And I require something to tell the Queen. We damn near started a war with the bloody Estradi. Well, um, it was a most unfortunate situation. And, yes, indeed, um, most unfortunate. And now I've got to sort it all out. They were executed. You have to tell you again that the Queen is very, very, very much courting the Estradi these days. She's allowed them to open a temple in Queensport. She's she's making great strides towards the diplomacy with them. And then you come here, and you bollocks it all up. I, uh, with due respect, sir, um, they were performing public executions in the middle a of the... A bloody uh, peasants, temple. man. Who cares? Peasants die. That is the way of the world, sir. <laughs> It is very uncouth to execute them at a time. We, we are at a tournament to display the glory of our 
our people, our combat skills. The I will should not be sit here and have a bloody fabric merchant tell me about our honor. Your family has won no battles. Your name is one purchased with coins. Uh, your family was so. lucky. You were in the right I'm place also. when the queen moved to her red. I am talking, and if you speak again, I will drop this gauntlet, and you and I will settle this like men. Have I made myself clear, Devere? Yes, Very well. Let's not make any more of a botch job of this than we have. Your squires have been stripped of you. You are expelled from the tournament. You must atone for your actions and present great tribute to the queen to re-earn her favor. You have one year within which to do this. If you do not present yourself to the queen in one year's time with a significant offering to glorify her name and the crown, you will be discommoded and expelled. Am I clear? Yes, yes, sir, very clear. I don't need to tell you how much money we've had to give the bloody Davonix to offset this bullshit you've created. Now get your personal things, and only your personal things, and be gone from my sight, sir. And may God have mercy on you, and kill you in the year forward, so that you are no longer an embarrassment to the crown or to the knighthood. Good day, sir. I will prove the worth of my, both myself and my family, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sure you'll find the greatest fabric in the world be gone. I'll turn and I'll, I'll down what's left in my wine glass. I'll place it on the table with a more than, not a gentle thump, just a on, 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 on the table and step outside and I'll say, um, go hard um, and your beastly friend. Um, I'm afraid... Uh, it looks like I'm not going to be able to help myself to our, our weapon store, unfortunately. Um, that did not go quite as well as expected. You heard oh. the whole thing, by the way. <laughs> it's only a tent. It wasn't walls. <laughs> Look, I, I have a dagger I can loan you, but that's, that, that, that's, that's about it. Um, we'll have to see if anyone else... Uh, or may, maybe there will be... Um, some smithy nearby where we can pick up a, a, a sword or something, but uh, my attempt to get some freebies here did not, uh, did not go down well. We'll figure something out. Don't worry about it. I tried. I tried. So you Come, let us, let us meet the others at the, uh, at the camp. Okay. At the rover camp, uh, like I said, everything's going fine. You're, you're, they're packing up some food for you and stuff like that. They've taken what coin you can give them, and they've sent runners off to get stuff for you from the market, so from the, the stalls, so you should be okay. Navari Ishmtar, you arrive at your family's encampment, which is definitely on the opposite side of the camp from the Palabrians, so you know, you're know you sort of on the, the other bracket of it all. And uh, your father is like, what, what is all of this I've heard? You're involved in fighting with with Ostradi? Mm. Father, you must understand they were unjustly executing innocent peasants. You are you are a servant of the Prophet now? You decide what is justice? I had a, I had a dream where I was told this, and now I know who you are. You are my great son, the justice bringer. Is this it? Father, I just couldn't stand back and watch watch and do nothing what what if they were one of our family would we still allow them then this to we would have risen up innocent? as a group and burned them to the ground and shown them the power of god but you are defending people who could well be our enemies your dalliances with this island religion have gone far enough i will hear no more of this i will hear no more of your your belief in this Pendrick reformation. You will atone. You will pray, and you will find the prophet's words again, because you have gone too far, my son. Your mother may be soft, but I will not be. You must atone. You are not to leave this camp again until I say farewell. Have I made myself clear? 
Father, I must. We ha- I have a very important mission that has been assigned to me. Assigned to you? Who yes. has assigned to you this mission? We were at the gypsy camp. And... <laughs> Jitos? Father, I know you do not you want to hear this. You are taking you missions from this. rovers? From, from, Father, from I came to you out of respect to tell you what I was doing, not to ask for your permission, unfortunately. You are my son, and you speak to me like this? Father, this mission is of the <laughs> utmost importance. <laughs> this goes beyond religion. This is, this is a world matter, Father. Beyond religion? Beyond religion? This is the world of God. Everything that happens here is His. And are we not all God's people, even if some of us don't believe in Him? You do not believe in God now? Is no, 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 I do, but th- these these people who are going to be executed are obviously not of the same faith as me, yet they're still no. God's people, are they not? They are heathens. That's not for me to decide, Father. Tell me of this mission. I want to know more of this blasphemy that you've brought to our name. Uh, what was the mission again? I don't know. What is the mission? Shall we take another character moment to me. remind him of what the mission is? <laughs> Laurelin, since you've recruited all these people together, would you like to uh, to uh, remind Navari of what his quest is that you put him on? Well, we don't particularly know exactly the detail, all the details of the quest, but we do know that we are going to um, we're going on a journey, and we'll see where it takes us. And apparently we are all chosen as part of the cycle, right? Yeah. Not a thing. A thing doesn't know why he's going with you. That's which is awesome. <laughs> uh, I'll put my stream in the chat for people. So there you go. Now you know what you now you have a, a vague remembrance of your mission and you know that it's a Pendrick cycle, so you can do what you like with that. <gasps> a mission from God. We have another re-roll from Michael Chad. Thank you, Michael yeah. Chad. Oh. So, what is the so, mission that you put upon? Father, um, me, not just I, but several others have been chosen specifically for this mission. We have, we, we have reason to believe that the Pendrick cycle is uh, starting again. We must put a stop to this. Pendrick cycle. Your mission is fairy tales. Your mission is stories of magic and elves and and golden castles. Is this what you tell me? The the stories have been exaggerated greatly, Father, but they are based in truth, I assure you. Prophets preserve us. My son has been touched by madness. I see no reason to let you leave this camp. I see no reason to allow you to continue on this crazy idea that you have in your head if that's the way you see it father then i think you should very well let me leave the camp in order to not disappoint you any further that is your mother's mouth you speak like i'm very grateful for my mother may her soul rest with god your mother was a beautiful and good woman but she was a woman of these islands and she is she was free spirited you have inherited much very well i will give you a mission my son you will go on your little quest and you will learn humility and when you return to me you will explain why i was right and why you have learned the ways and may the prophet walk with you and may god watch over you and may you learn to be a man Thank you I for your blessings, Father. Take what you need from our 
equipment and go. Well, I will obviously be taking my horse. It will make the journey much Do not easier. give me a list of things you are taking. I do not need that. I just need you to go. Take what okay, you father, need. Okay, Father. I will bother you no longer. Uh, and he just sort Thank of you for your blessings, though. I have lost my mind, but you are my son and I love you, so I will indulge you in this, but learn from this, my son. Learn from this. And I sort of just look down in like disappointment, knowing that I've upset my father, but knowing that I have to do what is what is needed and turn around and walk away. Okay. So uh, you grab your horse, you grab some stuff. Are you doing, grabbing anything other than just basics? Yeah. Um, probably just provisions, um, making sure I've got all my armor and accoutrements, yeah. So you're getting the side eye from a lot of the other men in the camp. You know, they're sort of like, you know, you know, like, you know how it is. You, you're doing weird shit. So you're disrupting the herd, as it were. And the herd is now going, but no one gets in your way. No one stops you as you uh, you head out. And as you're walking towards the front, one of the old clerics who travels everywhere with you comes walking up. And he's an older man, very, very old. And uh, he just sort of puts a hand on your shoulder and goes, my, my son, please, a moment uh, before you go. Yes, how can I help? I, I wish to give you blessings in this endeavor you are undertaking. God has oh, well, clearly you. put you on a path, and the path of God is not easily understood by... And he sort of just glances at your father's tent. But I understand. Please, kneel, and I will give you the blessings of the prophet and God. So you kneel down, and he does a little, you know, religious humana, 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 and anoints your forehead with a little oil, and then goes, now go and bring glory to God with each step you take. Thank you. And I'll make my way forward. All right. So eventually you're all going to rejoin at the uh, the Jito camp. Uh, Philip has decided napping was a really good idea at this moment in time. <laughs> until until Hungar gets back, Philip is taking a nap in, on a bay, a bay of hail, uh, a bay of hail, a, a bay, uh, oh my God, a bale of hay, and uh, quite relaxed and snoring quite happily about it all as you all sort of slowly are gathering together. Uh, Thane, I assume you're kind of having that, Long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs, uh, air about you. So uh, I'm I'm gonna not... be near Philip because he's kind of the only one that talks to me right now. So uh, I'm gonna sit there. But yeah, I'm definitely feeling. Okay. Well, you I... can see that, Norlin. You can see that he looks uncomfortable as you're sort of dealing with all these these rovers and Jito. Yes, that that'll be fine. Thank you, thank you. I'm kind of as they're bringing stuff to me and I'm organizing everything, and I look over a thing off the side of my eye and kind of wander over to him uh the little skulls and trinkets hanging off my staff clanking as i'm you know walking easily towards him what bothers you younger thing you seem troubled well this isn't why i came here it's supposed to be oh, in the I... tournament it's supposed to well got a girl that was good uh and then you're supposed to go home and now instead I think I started a war. Quite possibly, but you are following your destiny, son. And you are following and you will uh, complete you will find your path along the way, not to worry. Just go with the flow, as they say. Uh, okay. I'll do and my not for either. There will be turn there will be other tournaments in the future, and you will prove yourself. So I, I assume everybody else is coming in. <laughs> See, the, coming that awkward point. moment, you just kind of go. I've just, you give that like okay. you know, you said your wisdom, and you walk off. And is, <laughs> I, is I, your I, I, my character has nothing. So yeah, he's just like. Huh. You, uh, as, as Marie walks up to you, and again, she's a slip of a girl. I mean, she's maybe 13 years old, right? She's a tiny little thing. And she just walks up and she holds out a, a, a sugared cinnamon stick candy to you. To which of me? Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How old am I? I don't know. It's your character. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Uh, all right, yeah, so uh, I, I look, I kind of smile and I just, you know. But, but it's good. It's, it's good. 
Okay. You know who I am, yes? No. I met you, but I don't know who you are. I'm the seer. I guide uh, the wise man who she points toward the Laurel I am. Do not worry. I have seen you in the stars. You have a role yet to play in this. You have a purpose. And now, and she just sort of pats your hand, you have a friend. And she smiles and walks off, sort of pattering after the wise man as fast as she can. And then you see Devere come walking in, looking mighty unhappy, <laughs> pulling, dragging a horse, a pack horse, loaded with as much shit as he could put on it, and the other two. I, I stand up, like, as proper as I know how. Kirby, um, is everybody else here and ready? Um, Looks like it. They're talking. Philip's sleeping. I hate to say this, but um, my attempt to find um, some something useful for Bok to wear and wield um, failed. Um, the... <laughs> My goodness. Is that a boar? <laughs> no, <Phillip>. that's... <laughs> so, Gerard, no need to explain yourself. You but did I well in, try in trying to do what you can. But, but, I must but the rovers here have um, seemed to have given us everything we need. And it seems that uh, Bach here is in need of some omnet. I look at the young girl... Do you think um, your people could supply Mr. Bart here with a few arms, maybe some armor? Yes, I have another beer. He, he smells, um, and she sort of holds out her hand to you, Bart. Come. I'll go with her. So she leads you around, and there's a bunch of, um, like, you know, like wine uh, barrel tubs. There's like that filled with water, and you see various, you know, Jitogar bathing, and she just sort of does this like you know, wash yourself please. yeah yeah and um while you do that you see you're talking to some of the other jitos and they bring you like you know pants and you know shoes and a tunic and a cloak but no weapons and no armor it's an improvement and while he's doing that philip wakes up and uh we see young master navari coming back into camp walking his horse and maybe looking a little dejected i don't know what's 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 he look like what's navari's face looking like as he walks in okay there you go that's the face i had the best dream <laughs> about beers and turkey legs well i'm glad you had pleasant dreams philip because this journey probably will not be pleasant and i will say to you all again that I need all of you, all of us to stand together in this quest. If not, it will surely fail. I don't know what darkness lies ahead, but I know it's going to be a great darkness, and there will be hard times, a plenty. So any man that wants to turn back now, I completely understand. Um, Philip, has it been told to you before that you always make that noise when you sleep? What noise? I didn't hear anything. Clearly not. Um, offer a, a coin to to uh, to Kirby. Here, son. Um, no, 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 no. Can you go and get some candles, please? I wish to make some wax earplugs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Uh... I, yeah, I'm going to go try. If there's somewhere close, I will go try to purchase some candles. Uh, nice, good beeswax candles. The merchant, of course, he deserves that. The merchant section is quite large. It takes up a, a full third of the camp is all the people mm -hmm. selling stuff, right? And as you run through, you can see there's armors, there's weaponsmiths, there's cloth, there's food, there's oils, there's all sorts of things. And you sort of are weaving in and out of the people. And you notice some people are giving you a look 
and it's not a bad look. It's like sort of like some people are sort of giving you like this like type of look. Like they they recognize you. And uh, you eventually see a guy who's got candles, beeswax candles. Like that's all he's got is just endless candles and lanterns, right? Like that's all he's got. And as you walk up, he looks at him and goes, Oh, I can help you, sir. Hey, you're what? the one with the shot. Yeah, yeah, I did pretty well at the tournament. Well, at least the one one ah, round I was in. That tournament, you're the one who let that guy on the cross go in peace. That's a hell of a shot, son. You saw that? Everyone Don't saw that. Sh- really? Everyone saw that. You're the talk of the camp. Can, 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 I, can I get uh, some... Uh, I'd like some smelly uh, candles. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you need a half dozen, dozen. What does this give me? Oh, your money's no good at my shop, mate. You protected one of our own. You sent him on his way and released him. You're good folk. And he sort of packs up a side, well, like, thank a, you. like a leather, like a bag, like a canvas, and he wraps it all up and ties up. Hey, oh, a dozen of my best candles just for you. And he, and he grabs a glass and iron wrought candle holder, like a lantern candle holder, and goes, for your troubles. Wow, that's so nice. What's your name, mister? My name is Stephen. And if you remember my name and you spread my name around, I'll be a happy man. Stephen, the candler. That's who I am. I, I will remember. You're so nice. Thank you. I, I appreciate this. And I, I just turn around because I don't know how to, what to make of this. And I turn around. I'm jogging back. So people are still looking at you. And like you, by the time you get back, you know, you've had a few pats on the shoulders as you go. It's all commoners doing it. It's like none of the people that have clothing or money. You know what I mean? It's all the people that are like... <laughs> You know, working people, but uh, they they seem to be like a good half dozen of them were like you know, oh, and that type of thing as you were running through the camp. I go up to Gerard, and I was like, "Listen, I'm not a fighting man. I don't believe I can see that and violence, but we need to do something about Jared Bob armor and weapon. I believe." So I re- I I reached these people are helping him out. No, they just gave him both. So I reach into my coin purse and I pull out all the coin that I have. I give it to dry and I was like, use this to help get something. Very well, Philip. Um, you, you, you are most generous, not just with the noise of your sleeping and your sharing of your dreams. I mean... It sounded very much as though your body was belching out what you were eating in that dream of yours. Um, it must have been a very good turkey, turkey leg, an excellent ale. But your generosity knows no bounds. Um, I, I have a good eye for a quality weapon, so I shall find out what Bok prefers to wield and uh, see what I can do. But this is, this is most generous. I, I guess I see Ithain coming back um, mm-hmm. about now. Uh, thank you. Keep look what, I got. Look what I got. Keep a candle for yourself and keep that candle hold of yourself. It is most, very nice. I'll take a candle. I Violet, got the best candle. smelling ones I could find. So they should be in your ears. You should probably get a little. That will um, help with Bokht in the long term. Um, Bokht, here's one for you and your pet. So one each for you and your pet. And Navri, here's one for you. Philip, you won't need one. I don't believe we, uh, we, we, you, we quite make as much noise as you do. So um, I will keep it back, sir. No, keep it for your efforts. Well, thank you. Why is everybody doing this to me today? Some of us in the last hour or so. May have had a bit of a lesson in humility. Very well. Um, I did. Not quite the dressing down that I had, young man. Not quite the dressing down that I had. No, I had people patting me on the back, and I think they might be trying to take stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I certainly had something taken from me, potentially, and that is my honor. No, I gave it to you. Well, I was going to give it to you. Oh, I don't mean coin. Right. Um, let us see. Um, Gerhard, uh, Mr. Bach, you have a very similar name to me, uh, spelling-wise, though it is pronounced somewhat differently. Um, what, uh, 
what what weapon do you prefer to wield? Let us go shopping. Now, now Gerhard is actually wearing nice clothing. It's very Jitto, so it's very embroidered with floral pattern. It's like, you know, very, it's way stylisher than an Estrati who don't believe in ornamentation would wear, but they're nice. They're nice sort of bloomy pants and good leather boots and a beautiful warm tunic and a nice, nice, nice fur cloak. It's quite lovely. I'm secretly... I'm secretly glad because um, it means that my spare clothing that I keep on my horse is going to stay for me <laughs> and not in, not come in contact with anybody else's skin. Um, but I, I'm on about getting you a weapon, Gerhard. Um, is there anything you prefer? Come, come. Let us let us find you a, uh, a suitable a suitable sword. A Zweihander. A Zweihander. It sounds Very fancy. Well. It does, yes. Um, come. And um, I think we should go uh, looking for a a decent spy hander for, uh, for Gerhard. So you two are heading into the market? Yes. Okay. What is Navari and the rest of you doing while they leave? Getting my... Oh. Getting what? Sorry? Getting my stuff ready to go. <laughs> it's not hard. Just getting my horse ready. and feeding him the carrot. <laughs> Okay. And uh, Laurelin, what are you doing while this is all going on? I'm still arranging to get, you know, the provisions we need all packed up and everything. And uh, as Gerard leaves, I kind of point at him with my staff. Do not be long, Sir Gerard. We must be heading out of this place as soon as possible. Uh, I'm going to walk over to... Long. Long. Sorry. Oops, that was weird. Okay. This Sorry should not that. take too long. Um is, is is there a suitable weaponsmith about the market? Anyone selling arms and arms? You saw you saw a number of the methane. You saw like there was like literally like four or five in order that just had rows of swords and axes and daggers and all kinds of stuff. And there was a couple of armorers and things like that. Okay, I have the uh, the rec recognized weapon quality skill, so I'm hoping to just find something that looks looks. Um, Suitable. Uh, don't want any charlatans. Um, and look, look for someone. Looks like they're selling quality arms. None of this cheap nonsense. So as you guys are walking through the market, two things are happening. Well, three things are happening. One, people are looking at Gerard with a, like a sort of curious but respectful look. They're looking at Bacht with like a suspicious look, and they're making as much space as they can away from the beast folk that is following along behind Gerard and just they're Bach just looking at them all still chewing on the candle you gave him and sort of seeming like he's getting to enjoy the taste of beeswax lavender candles um, eat it. Uh, eat it. Uh, and like I said there's a whole bunch of armors and smithies and weaponsmiths uh, like there's like a whole row of them and then behind them are actual um, uh, bellows where guys are working, and you know you can hear the clink, clank, clink, clink, and you can smell it and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's. It rem it, oh no, it doesn't because you've never been to war. I was going to say it reminds you of war, but you've never been to war, so it doesn't remind you of anything. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's a whole thing going on. And as you're looking at all the weapons, there's one guy who seems to be like the sword guy of all of them. He has the most variety of swords. And as you're sort of looking through, he sort of walks up. He's a portly man, red-faced, uh, you know, a bald pat, but with like a like one of those like Lincoln-style beards, you know, no mustache, just the beard. And he's got huge arms and like red, like this guy works his forge for sure. And he sort of wipes his hand on his apron and goes, Oh, yeah, uh, uh, do you um, a, a large uh, Zweihander, two-handed blade style, um, for um, my friend Gerhard here. I, he's he's a, a good swordsman um, wielding the longer blades, so I'm looking for something suitable. Zweihander. Quality. Zweihander, yes. Uh, no Zweihander around here. I've got bastard sword. That's about closest I could give him. Hand and a half. Is that sufficient for you, Bacht? Yeah. Then we shall have one of those. And I, and I, so he walks you over to one row, and there's about a dozen different sort of hand and a half there. And he's like, "All right, find what you like, the one you want, and I'll negotiate price." Huh? 
Yes, well, uh, well what, uh, what sort of price are we looking? Um, Bach, if you'd like to just try the, the balance of them. Is. I'm not as flat as each one as a cool price. There's some are better. I mean, they're all good. They're all good, but some are better, you know? Bach, just try them. For, try them. Just but try them. Check the check the what balance, which balance suits you, um, which grip is most comfortable, and uh, then look. Philip has given me his coin. I have some coin as well. Do not worry. We will. We should be able to afford this. So, are you wearing your armor right now, or are you just wearing your your normal clothes? I have my full armor on. You have your full armor. He's yeah. reached over and he started rubbing the 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 the, the pauldron of your armor. Uh, where do you get this? Uh, my uh, my family. Um, it's pal- finest Palabrian plate. <laughs> it's cut up. <laughs> Is it? I have witness that metal. Yeah, fold it right. Too much. Too much. Aye, too it'll much break. Say. It'll break. Cold night will do it, and that'll be the end of it. You should not get that replaced. Are you sure? Uh, sure. I don't tell your business, you don't tell me mine. No. Well, so um, I, 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 that conversation off to the side, Bonk, you become aware of a small man beside you. And as you sort of look down, there is literally a dwarf standing there. I don't mean like a, a little person, I mean a dwarf dwarf, you know, like of the race of dwarves. Yeah. And he sort of nods and he goes, Morning. Morning. But uh, what you're looking for? For a good, uh, preferably two-handed sword, but taking what I can get at this at this moment. And he just sort of looks at them all, and he just looks back and goes, mm. and he just taps his thumb along the most boring, plain, just like a blade, a haft, and a hilt. You know what I mean? There's nothing spectacular about it. He goes. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's good still. Going to pick that one up. So it's got a nice balance. It feels solid. There's no leather on the pommel. Nothing. It's like a naked, bare, raw sword. Perfect. You look back. He's gone. He's not even there. That's the one. Hey, talk to my cousin. He does our my tree shop down there. Take a look to him. I fix that. It'd be a good job for you. I'll tell him you sent you. Uh, I, I, I don't believe we have the time to get this sorted, unfortunately. But um, uh, I'll bear that in mind for future. Um, Bach, have you de- have you decided on on the blade? Yeah. He looks that one. He, it's what he's chosen. Five one crowns. Most, five. Hey, Very well. It's not worth much more than five crowns. It's five crowns. Very well. Oh, and he, and he grabs a, a long strip of leather and rolls it up and throws it to you. You might want to wrap that. I don't fall at your hand in the rain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Five Need scabbard. Scabbard box? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, for that one, he looks around. He starts going through a barrel of scabbards, looks back. Pulls out the most boring, un like just, just this is literally definition of scabbard, you know, and nothing yep. more than that. Throws it is fine. Two crowns. Two crowns. Very well. Very well. Right. Go to my cousin. Tell him Anurus sent you. Anurus, I sent you. He'll give you a good deal. I'm not sure we quite have time at the moment, but uh, Anurus. Anurus. Yeah. And us. Okay. okay. Uh, well, Very well. well, thank you. Thank you. He, um, he turns and walks off back to his bellows, having done his business with you. I think we return to the camp now, Bokht. We have, we have a weapon for you. Yeah. And Philip has some change. Yeah. Very good. Very well. The uh, the candle is now half gone. The second half is wrong. Um. Can you tell your pet uh, the candle is not for eating? It's for the ears, so he can sleep at night. I think he's going to sleep no matter what. <laughs> okay. Very well. Let him do as he will with that uh, with that candle. Um, yeah. 
So you head back? Yes. All right. You all regroup back at the Jitto camp. In the uh, east, you can see storm clouds coming in. They're off maybe 30 miles, but you can see them forming up there. The wind has picked up a bit, and you can smell the moisture on the wind. There is definitely a rainstorm heading your way. The next I kind part of remove the, my further feathery cloak, and it just co completely covers my face with all these feathers and fur at the end. Well, looks like we have to get a bit of wet weather. So, Gerard, have you finished your business in the camp? Gerhard has a, a suitable weapon. Philip, here is um, we, we did not need all your coins, so here is here is the remainder. So, whatever you gave me, minus seven. And I take that and I split it in half and I give the other half to Bob. So he is not a penny of this. So okay. you've got about uh, half a dozen crowns. So that's like, you got like about, in real world terms, about like 50 bucks. So you're not broke. Well, so Gerard, is the rest of our party ready? I feel like we should be setting off. I believe so. Um, my armor, does it look uh, good to you? <laughs> it looks just dandy, sir. Dandy. As you always do. Your armor looks fine to me as a fellow knight, yeah? Not yeah, the look. I'm, ta I'm tapping on my pole. Not the look. He's concerned about the quality. But your hair, yeah. sir, just a little bit right sir, there. Sir Gerard, what's got you up in a, in a tizzy? Oh, nothing, nothing. Um, you sure my armor looks okay? I mean, uh, it I'm looks walk, as good walk as up to him. I'm gonna tap it with my fist. <clears throat> it, it's it's hard. <laughs> it's supposed to be. But then, then I think it works. Yes. yes. You know, armor's fine, sir. And I give him a playful little tap at the end of my staff into his stomach. Now, without any, if we don't have any other business to attend to, I think we should be setting off. And I look to the girl. She nods. I Leave away. put my hood up, got my quarter staff ready. As like Shanks Mirror, it is. It is Shanks Mirror for you, sir. As you guys start heading north, well, you head a little bit west out of the camp and then follow. So there is the salt road. The salt roads were the roads that basically ran across the island of Albana. Uh, they were called the salt roads because basically the first one was the salt road out of Escane, where the salt mines were, where they brought a lot of it down. Now the salt is mostly mined out of the north of Davin, and the Devonic Knights have made sure to keep the salt roads alive across the island. Um, but the old salt road, or the old salt, uh, goes into Escane, and this is the old former big road of the island. <clears throat> As you guys start following it here, the cobbles are good. The stonework is good. It's still a good quality road for travel on. You've got two horses for knights, one pack horse, and that's it. You guys are carrying everything else, just so we're clear. Uh, I would like the seer. I, um, I will offer the seer to the seat behind me on my horse. Um, as she can, I will move forward as much as possible. Oh, to Esmeralda? I, I don't believe a young girl should be made to walk. She smiles. So she I, I am good. Thank you. Uh, I, I, am, I am Rover. We walk. We walk everywhere. The offer, the offer is there. Appreciated. If I get tired, I will certainly take it. Thank you, sir. You are very kind. May I read your fortune later? Certainly. Certainly. Excellent. He has lots of fortune. <laughs> she runs up beside <laughs> Laurelin, who is like... So basically, she's attached herself for the most part to Laurelin. And the beast man has attached himself to Bacht, right? Uh, she does sometimes smile at Kirby, and every now and then she'll smile at Ishmael Navari. She doesn't interact much with Philip. She doesn't shun him or anything, but she doesn't, you know, like she sort of keeps a healthy distance from him. Don't know what that's all about. Uh, but as you guys start walking, you know, it's, it's, it's north. You're walking north on an old road, basically. And, uh, you know, you're making okay time. And by about mid-afternoon... You've covered maybe about 10 miles of uh, ground. You've done good time, but the wind has been picking up. And by about midday, the rain starts. And it's that 
kind of rain. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's like the kind of rain you see where it's like you know like rivet, rivulets of water coming down off the sides of buildings and stuff like that. I mean, you are soaked to the bone. So much so that I'm going to need everybody to give me a D20 check versus their physical endurance, please. Do we want under or over? Under. Well, why don't you tell me what you got, and then we'll see. I got a one. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. It's under. I got a four. <clears throat> 17. What's your, what's your PE, Cody? Uh, 15. Okay, so you're not enjoying this. You're getting tired. You're getting cranky. You can you can feel it. You know what I mean? Something's... I rolled 18 and mine's 11. <laughs> you're, you're, you're literally falling asleep in the saddle. You're so tired of riding, and it's been such a busy couple of days. Kirby? Uh, I rolled a 10. My P's 13. Okay, so you're, you're a little... Am I rolling 3d6? No, 1d20 no. under your PE. Equal to or under your PE. 1d20. All right, one sec. He doesn't look happy with that. <laughs> he looks upset. <laughs> I think it's because he's using the roller on his phone, so it pauses yes. the camera. Yes, yes. We need to send him a set of dice. We do need to send well, him a set of dice. I got a one, and my PE is uh, 14. So. Yeah, so you're fine. You're like, you know, you're young, you're full of energy, and this is fine. Um, <clears throat> but it's wet and it's annoying. Um, Bok, you notice that uh, the beast man keeps glancing behind, and then he runs off a little bit, and then he runs back, and then he runs around, and then he runs back, but he seems to be really focused on behind you guys. Um, he seems quite uncomfortable about things. I'm going to stop, wait till he catches up, and just look at him and go, what's up? He Please. looks up at you because he, he doesn't tend to stand fully, right? Like he tends to yeah. sort of hunch down a lot. And he just looks and goes, Follow them. Something back. Man flesh. All right. Perfumed. Perfumed. Devere. Hmm? 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 Well, Our um, beast friend thinks we are being followed. He smells perfume. Want me to go look? Yeah, yes. I, I would let, 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 the, let the boy look. I, I was just... Um, I, 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 wasn't, I, I wasn't sleeping. I was just closing my eyes. You, look very you were checking for leaks, we know. Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you I'm, simply I'm didn't turn want the, sun, to, uh, the okay. sun to scorch your eyes. That's all. I'm going to start jogging off to see if somebody says no, stop, or get going. And then after a while, if nobody says anything, I need to warm up. So I'm almost going to go into a sprint for a little bit uh, until okay. I can get a good vantage point of something behind us. Now, I'm not a scout. I'm a longbowman. But, uh, I mean, I do have some skills that would help. Okay. What skill do you think would help? What skill do I think would help? Um, uh oh, did I get rid of? Never mind. <laughs> I got rid of those skills for uh, for the purposes of uh, getting horsemanship instead. Okay, but you don't have a horse, which is working out perfectly. I'll take care of Devere's. You're gonna take care of Devere's? Uh, I can't wait to see your new character, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um... you head back about maybe a couple hundred yards. And uh, once you get past, like, the road, like, this is getting into the hill country as you head towards Escane, right? The, the land is going up, so it's hills, 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 and then drops. And Escane itself is a big valley that you'll be going into. But as you get to the sort of the, the third hill back, you see, walking down the middle of the road, a small person. They're, they've got a bag and a cloak and they're, they look tiny. They don't look like a like a big man. They just look like a small... By, by himself? Walking. Yeah, by themselves. Yeah, walking. Uh, I have detect ambush and detect You're concealment. Not entrance, so. You're not, not there. You're not there. Oh, sorry, there. that's him. <laughs> uh, I'm going to watch for, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute. Is there any sort of cover here at all? Common oh, yeah, sense there's, cover. 
Okay. The, the, road, the trees are starting up, and as you get closer to Iskane, there'll be more and more and more forest, because Iskane is all forest. But uh, basically, there are trees along the road, and there's little wooded, you know, um, um, what do they call that? Uh, a group of tree cops, you know, yeah. trees and stuff like that. Okay. Well, my expertise is in speed, not in uh, hiding. So once I, I'm pretty confident that this thing is by itself, I'm just going to turn around and run back, probably stay off the road or stay close to the road where I'm more like in ditch side, whatever. So that I'm not just silhouetting roll, myself. All right. The 20 roll. You, oh, a one. Okay. So, uh, you're, uh, so again, you're, you're just stepping off to the side of the road and waiting. Is that what you're doing? Or well, you I'm looking, back? I'm looking for about a minute just to see that, you know, he's not leading anything or talking to anything or whatever. And then I'm going to run back. Okay. So you run back. Yeah. All right, so eventually he comes jogging up. Devere is literally sleeping in the saddle at this point. I don't know what I'm supposed to see, but there's just a little guy walking. Why Why have we stopped? And I, <laughs> as I'm talking and looking back, I start walking and I tap on uh, the leg armor of Gerard pretty, pretty profusely with my staff. Ah, what? When did we stop? Wake up there, sir. We have seems like younger Fane has what, seen something. Why what did you stopped? see, boy? I saw, why have we all stopped? Well, it's it, there's just a little guy walking. Just by himself, um, coming this way. Some little guy, just ignore him. Okay. I say we stop and wait for him and see what he wants. <sighs> there's I'm only one of them. Oh, is that much danger? Must... Probably fire. It's cold outside. What was he wearing? I just... A cloak? I didn't pay attention to his shoes, sorry. I can go back and find out. I'm wondering if it's a dwarf from earlier. Well, I mean, he's small, but I wouldn't call him a dwarf. That's mean. No, no. <laughs> what, what dwarf from earlier? Man. Man flesh. Not dwarf. This was child flesh. I say we wait here for whatever this is. What say you, Sir Drawn? Sia, has one of, one of your kin decided to follow us? Is, 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 that, is that what it could be? Uh, send them one back if it is. is. We will wait I'm here for a moment. I'm sure this is one of her kin or something like that. She's just yeah, I'm, I'm quite happily wait here. <laughs> She's not doing anything unless you tell her to, Orlin. She's just waiting beside you. The rain so, beating off of so her. So, what cloak. do you want me to do? I'll do something. You're fine, Fane. Just um, accompany me for a moment. I kind of walk towards the back of the party and look over the rise of the hill, kind of gazing through, mm -hmm. lifting up my cloak a little bit, shaking off the rain. About two hills back, you can see this small figure walking along. It's probably going to be about 20 minutes before it catches up to you at this rate. It's not making good speed. I just kind of wait. <clears throat> Ugh, shaking off rain from my cloak. I'll, um, even though it's raining and I don't really like this idea, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the bow out. Not knocked and ready, but just ready enough where if I need to use it. Sure. I'm going to take a drink of beer out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> He's warming oh. up another way. Out of your I'll, skin. I'll I'll grumble and dismount and uh, head over to Santa by Laurelin's shoulder. So, what has uh, Bok's pet smelt now? I, I hope you're right. I look at the fire it. and I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Well, you said it's not dwarf; it's definitely human. If that's a human, then it looks like a child. Yeah. Fat child. Well, if it is a child, we shouldn't let him be wandering out in the rain, now should we? I look at the fire and say, man, I hope Gerard's armor don't rot. <laughs> <laughs> Will people please stop talking about my armor today? <laughs> Tap my pauldrons. <laughs> well, the, ro the rovers let let the little girl, maybe they let a little boy come join her. As Mary shakes her head, looks up at you, Lorlin. 
that's not my people. But this is expected. The stars have shown. Well, I trust in your judgment. And we will wait to see what the stars have brought us, shall we? So I'm just going to wait on my staff. Stand uh, there in the rain waiting. You have another seven or so minutes. The, the It's definitely a child. And uh, he gets within about 30 yards of you guys and he just stops. You know, you guys are at the top of a hill looking down. It's not a huge hill or anything, but it's enough of one. And he's just sort of looking up at you all. Chevalier de Vert. I'm sorry, boy. I don't understand a word you're saying. Je besoin de parler avec Chevalier de Vert. He wishes to speak with me. Oh, yes. Saint Ron. What language was just... that? That was uh, Salaric, which is the language okay. of both Fey. Okay, don't know it. Uh, yes. Um, uh, do you speak Alberesh so that uh, my, the, these others may be able to understand you? Uh, mid, 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 mani. I speak, I speak mid, mani. You speak mid, mani. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I look for uh, Knight Devir. That is I. Oh, and he starts coming faster up to you. And as he gets closer, and he sort of looks up at you and sort of drops his hood in the rain because it seems like that's proper etiquette for him. Uh, he is uh, definitely a young lad. Um, he's. Uh, under his cloak, you can see he's wearing the colors of your house on his uh, on his tunic, and uh, he basically um, looks at you and says, "My uh, maître, my my mistress told me uh, I should come to talk at you, and that you would know her." And he holds out a chain with a locket. Do I spot a family resemblance at all? I'm going to need to um, roll on your IQ on that one, please. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I've rolled 19. My IQ is 7. You look <laughs> like a snotty little off Asian kid. Um, do I recognize the locket? Nope. Um, I will have your mistress's name, please, young man. Uh, Madame Giselaine Desarnier. Lady Jelaine. See, si, si, oui, 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 uh, oui, oui, uh, Jelaine, Madame Desalignes. Uh, and, and, and what, please, please, the message. Uh, uh, je m'appelle uh, Perrin Bobineau. My name is Perrin Bobineau. Uh, I am to give you this, and I, I am uh, to be squire. She has and a point. Still holding out the squire. rocket. Water's dripping off of it now in the rain. I will. I say I will. I would be honoured to uh, to take you as squire if the fair lady has uh, has, has uh, requested it. Um, and I'll take the locket from his hand. Okay, so I it's will... one of those ones that has that you can open it up like it's a cameo yeah. type thing, like a clasped uh, locket. Nice work. It's it. very expensive. And I'll take a little open... look inside. There's a painting of her on the inside of it. I will uh, place it into one of my pouches just neatly and just pat the pouch, tight, tighten the pouch up to keep it safe. Sure. And say, uh, and could you repeat your name, young man? Perrin Bobino. Perrin. 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 Oui, oui, Perrin, Perrin. Perrin, well, oui. per Perrin, um, welcome aboard. Oui, uh, j'ai faim. I, I, I have hunger. Oh, oh, oh so I, I'm, I am very, I am very, very sorry. Um, Laurelin, um, could we get a uh, some bread for the uh, the young man, Philip? Yeah, I thought it was thunder you were hearing, for sure. But now it's been steady for a while, and it's sort of getting on your nerves like that's not thunder. And as they're sort of talking and doing what they're doing, you sort of stand up a little taller and sort of glance back. And about four or five hills back, you see men on horses riding over the hill heading towards you. Well, we, I look at these guys as a jerk. Is that a spot of rust? 
also, there's some um, horsemen. I think we should get off the road. How many? So you're all looking Lot. now? Yeah. Lot. I don't see anything. Give me a d20 roll, please, everybody. The higher, the better, obviously. But let's see what you do. Whoa. No. I see my feet. I rolled a seven. Nice. What'd you get, uh, uh, Laurelin? Fifteen. Fifteen. Devere. Well, when I needed low numbers, I got eighteen and nineteen. Now I need a high number. I've got a three. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> you're bleary eyed and rain willed. Kirby. Fourteen. Fourteen. Philip. Oh, I'm blind. I rolled one. <laughs> so you're like, there's something over there, but I can't see any better. So Laurelin and Kirby, you can see it a lot better. There looks to be about a dozen armored and armed men on horses heading towards you. I start looking around uh, around the road. Is now with that great roll you got as you're looking, you look off in the distance, and maybe about another, if you really boogie, another 20 minutes down the road, you can see a roadhouse on the side. Now, the thing about the Salt Road is, is that there are roadhouses maintained about a day's journey along for people, and that's by Edict of the Kings. Um, so that would probably be the last roadhouse before Escane, which a part of your brain is going, that's weird because no one would be traveling north here normally, but there's clearly a roadhouse down the road. How far is it? Like I said, if you guys, as we say, gumboot it, you'd be about 20 minutes. How far are the riders behind us? At the rate they're going, they'll be on you in 10 if you stay put. Okay. Um, this is still an area of like tree shrubs, copses, and so yes. forth. Uh, I I'm not even going to wait for anybody to say anything. I'm grabbing the child. Picking him up, and we're moving into the into the the, the tree, the copses. I'm not running, sprinting because I can't. I'm carrying a kid, but I'm moving off to get him off the road. Okay, he's a little like he's a less, uh, and then he sort of you know because now you can hear the and he's he stops fighting right away. I suggest we get off the road. I'm um, following. I would also suggest to draw your arms. I have land I, navigation. Can I use that just if we can find? a quicker, faster way to get somewhere less noticeable. You can use it maybe to find a good hiding spot right now, but you can't find it to chart a course at this moment. I wrote a one, uh, do I wrote percentile on that? Percentile right? on that, yeah. Oh. Got a 21 and my land nav is 30. Okay, so you find you find a little area. There's sort of like there's a there's an oak sticking up, and then there's a bunch of rocks around it, creating a little sort of covered area that where you could sort of hide. Over here, guys. Well, well spotted, Philip. Well spotted. Yeah. Now we get about the horses, though. You got three horses, and they're large. And we've lost uh, Iman. Oh no, he's back. I see him down at the bottom. I'll add him in. I don't know shit about horses, so that's up to you guys. Is there no woodland or anything like that? We can like you said, it's copses of trees. It's it's not as heavy forest as you're heading towards, but it is fairly forested. You can maybe tie them off behind some trees and hope they don't draw too much yes, attention. That's what I'll attempt to do. Okay. Everyone's going to give me a prowl check to see if you can basically hide yourselves. If you don't have prowl, uh, concealment. Concealment is for objects, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. I don't have prowl, no, no. So then you Neither got it all. Good luck. <laughs> I don't have prowl either. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> it's funny how different yet the same Devere and I are. <laughs> <laughs> both stupid. We both don't have prowl. We <laughs> You're just opposite ends of the social structure. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I have no prowl. I'm wearing shiny heavy armor, and I've rolled an 86. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you rolled if you have no prowl, but that's okay. I just thought I might have a 1% chance, maybe. Well, I think everybody has like a 5% chance as the base for prowl. I would allow you that. So, if you know, if you roll under a 5, if you don't have prowl, you can pull it off. All right, but... baby, let's do this. Nope. I, okay, th I'm just going to say I'm cheating. I'm done. I'm not even going to tell you what I rolled. What'd you get? Uh, one. Oh, one. I believe you. So you basically like, fucking Kirby vanishes. Just a ghost. Let's see if I can do that. Can it can it get in there? Can it get, oh I just rolled. Never mind. Damn it. That's okay. <laughs> Iman, are you okay, buddy? You keep popping in and out. Wi-Fi is really bad. I apologize. Okay, well, we need you to make a do you know what's going on? Were you able to hear what we were talking about? Iman? 
Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you now. Okay. Did you hear everything that was going on while you were bonking in and out, or you lost as to what's happening? No. No, it was all just... Okay. So a <laughs> young boy showed up who's uh, uh, been sent by the lady Jelaine to be Devere's squire. I that at the same time, Philip noticed uh, men on horseback, armored men heading towards you, and now you're all hiding off to the sides of the road because the roadhouse 20, 20 so minutes up the road is too far for you guys to get to. So everybody's hiding. Do you have prowl skill? I don't have that one, no. Then you have a 5% chance of hiding. Please give me a percentile roll. Okay. Okay. I am officially saying it. Someone get his address, and we're going to head and buy him a set of dice. I, I, I'm on Amazon right now buying him a set of dice. No, no, there's the dice shop in England. It'll get to him faster. The dice yeah. shop in the UK. We'll send him a, a nice set of dice from there because this boy needs dice. Yes. Okay, so I will cancel this then. Sorry. I was trying to be cool. Well, you know what? We appreciate it, man. Yeah. I got 13. So, yeah. So, no. So Kirby hides really well. I got a ten. <laughs> What's your prowl? I don't have prowl. Then yeah. So Kirby five. hides really well. The rest of you, you're pretty sure you're hidden, but you don't know where the hell Kirby is. Kirby, give me a D twenty roll. D twenty. Okay. Uh, seven. Seven. You're like hidden and you're sort of like just like watching the road, watching the road, watching the road. And I'm then covering the child they, too. They just come right over the ridge of oh. the hill. And uh, it's the Estradi. It's the 12 mounted Estradi from the fair. And uh, you don't see as you're watching them ride by and they are riding straight past you. You don't see uh, Gerbrecht with them. You just see the 12 knights that he had in his employ or Templars, sorry. Um, I have to do something really quickly. They ride past about a hundred feet, and then they hold up, and they seem to be talking amongst themselves. Bacht, give me a d20 roll, please. 17. You can hear them, and you can hear they're speaking uh, Astorian to each other, the language of Astoria, which is the language you all speak. And they're going, I don't know where they are, but we saw them. They can't be far. Look there, up the road. House. Yeah, they went there. Okay, we go. And then poof, they go riding off towards that roadhouse. I guess we're not going to the roadhouse. I wait I wait till they run off out of sight a little bit and then come out of the trees with one of the uh, pack mules. Well, I feel the close coast is clear, but I feel like we should get off the road for a bit. Yeah, they're going to the roadhouse. Yeah, so the, I think that we should go across. The 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 beast man looks at you and goes, "Father, father," and he just starts walking off towards the woods. Well, I'm I following him. Him. Yes. I'll, I'm following him. Yes, I will follow him too. I'm looking to make sure the child's okay. Every, mm -hmm. You know, other than being scared or whatever. And he and seems then, fine. Cool. I'm still going to keep holding him by the hand so he can keep up, and or if I have to carry him, I'll carry him. Uh, yeah, gonna. He, yeah, he's, first, he's a yeah, bit like, draggy. He's clearly tired from his long walk to get to you guys. So was that uh, Lorlin? Already got like a quarter loaf of bread, and I bring out like a little wine flask, and I just hand it behind my back to the boy and pat him on the head. Merci, merci. And he starts eating and drinking wine. Well, Easy on if, the flask, boy. <laughs> he's well, so well, crazy. if he's Rust Bucket Squire, we should let him ride with Rust Bucket. So it's raining really hard. It's gotten dark because of those storm clouds, and now there's thunder uh, brewing, and you can see flashes of lightning up in the sky. The horses are having a hell of a time on the off-road because it's all turning into mud and muck and mire. And within an hour, you guys are, like, exhausted, all of you. Uh, except for, you know, Wolf Wolfman Boy, because he's just, like, he's running over rocks and trees and then coming back and then running off and then coming back. And then eventually he's, he's like, you know, sort of looks at you all as you're all sort of stopped because you cannot go any further. And he just sort of hunkers down on a rock and stares at you waiting. Just saying, you know, making no noise, nothing, just staring. We will stop I'm... here for just, just a bit to get our breath. And I just tumble down on a rock and just sit what? there and lean against my staff. What time off. of day is it? 
it's now late afternoon, but it feels like evening because of the dark clouds. I'm going to see if we can't uh, find it. Or I'm going to see if I can't spot a decent place to camp. A what? Decent place to camp. Give me a roll on your land navigation, but you're pretty tired, so I'm going to give you a penalty of 10 on it. 32. Out of a chance of 30, which now gets down to 20, so that would be a fail. You're, you're wandering around. It's just muddy and gross, and uh, you know the, it's just not good. And you're not having. You can't see more than ten feet, twenty feet ahead of you. You know, it's not good. <laughs> Your cat's cute. <laughs> yeah. She wants something. Um, I look, uh, gonna look at the uh, the little the kids. Uh, is he doing okay? Other than you know, hungry, cold like the rest of us. Well, he's he's sitting on a rock now, and he's just sort of okay. kicking his feet the way kids do, and he's just sort of you know sipping on the wine and eating the bread. Still, I'm gonna kneel um, in front of him. Like, hey. Excuse me, excuse me, Ethan. Um, I do believe this is he is my responsibility. Uh, I'm not sure you understand the role of squire. He needs to learn the etiquette. I was he just going to tell lord. him that, but go ahead. That's okay. I was going to tell him that you're a lord and that he needs to call you Sir Lord. But you know, if you're... I'm sure he knows that already. But he's my responsibility. Um, he has proven himself by staying with us now, and he needs to grow into the role. But please do not treat him with kid gloves. I look at he's a kid, back. sir. I look at Gerard's back and I like scratch a little bit. It's like, is that a crack for him? You shut up, Philip. You shut up, Philip. I'll just turn around real quick. I'm out there looking. No, no, my armor. My armor is good. So this kid just, you know, Baron just looks at you with big eyes, and you know. Uh, do you need any? Um, you need anything more to eat, young man? Uh, no, surely. Yeah, I, I am good. I am good. Okay. Who, who, are, who are those men, Chevalier? Uh, the Ostradi. Um, we must be careful. I don't know what this, what, what is, what is Ostradi. You will come to understand what they are, um, and their purpose all in good time. Um, I do not think you should worry your young mind with that just yet. Um, when you've done, um, resting, um, you please, um, make sure the horses are okay. Um, give them a little bit of a, a dry down, uh, make sure they're comfortable and fed, and I'll see to it that uh, food is provided for you as well. So he hops up. We should be sweet, sweet, and he and he runs Thank off you. to work with the horses, quite happy. Esmeray sees that, and she's just sort of like, um, "Sir de Vieux, may I, may I go? May I help him? Can I go to help him?" Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes. The horses are okay now. Yes. When you've done, yeah, you are free. Once you have performed the duties no, this, that this, I've this required is, no, this you. Is, this is Esmeray. This is the Jitto girl. Oh, She's yeah. actually oh, she can go help him. Oh, oh, um, yes, I, th I, I, th I think so. Yes. Um, he has a lot to learn. And he'll learn she faster. She walks away in the middle of your sentence. <laughs> she's what she got. Yes, she got the answer she needed, type of thing. And um, I, it leaves me talking because I'm quite yeah. verbose. So I'm still talking. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. oh. I'm not used to I, children walking away when I'm speaking. I, I have a question for Gerard. What do you think of the, cl uh, the cloth of my throat? Do you think it's of good quality? I would point I out that... the scene again. It is pouring rain. It is dark. You're in the woods with no cover. You're tired. You're hungry, and you're cold. Just keep that in mind. And, and this is how I get happy. Yep. yep. And, and I will squeeze the cloth and probably squeeze out um, a, load, a load of water and go. It it seems to be quite absorbent. It doesn't appear to be very very well waterproofed. Well, you would know about clothing. Is it comfortable? Yes. Is it warm? It keeps me warm at night. Then it is adequate. Only adequate. Could do with being a little more vibrant, though. Like like your armor. It's almost adequate. And I turn around and walk away taking a drink. 
I, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I'm gonna I, go I, over I, to Lorelin. I'm just leaning on my staff, my head down. I'm actually like in a meditation state. I'll tap him with just... an arrow. Oh, what? Oh, oh. I, I'm, oh I'm, young I'm fame. I'm freezing. I'm tired. But I'm gonna I'm going north a little bit just to make sure they're not coming back around. I cannot sit here. I cannot sleep like this. So I'm gonna Oh, very good. Do do what you must. Uh, I pull up. Letting my you know again. where I'm going in case I don't come back. Very good. <laughs> so I'm gonna, Aaron, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a bit north. Um Don't I, wander I, too far. So you're heading north. Do you have any uh, scouting skills or anything like that you want to bring to the table? Mm, wilderness survival. That's it. That's not really that. scouting. Me, so I'll allow okay. that. Give me a roll on that. Okay. Uh, I failed it by five percent. Well, there are three re rolls in the bank. If you want to use one of them, I don't have a good chance of making it. I'm not going to waste them here. Would you like to use your luck? Push your try test your luck. Oh sure. Was it fifteen percent? No, it's your d20. You roll a d20 under your luck. If you succeed, your luck goes down by oh, one. Oh, that's right. I, I know. Well, yeah, I didn't get a ten, so I have a ten luck. And I rolled a 15. <laughs> so you lose one luck. Your luck's now nine. As you're just wandering in the woods at this point, you're just like, I don't know where the hell I am. I don't know which way is east and west. I can't see the sky. Like, it's not fun. And then at some point, you get the smell of the beast man. Stop. So, just completely stop. And as you're sort of glancing around, you see these two yellow eyes in the, in the brush staring at you. And you hear, shh. I crouch down, acting like I'm hiding. And So he's under a thicket, and he, he motions you under it with him. And then you look, and you can see the road. And you can see the, the roadhouse. It's maybe 500 feet away from you at this point in time. It's not far. And you see all the knights riding away back south. Are they... From what little bit I would know about tactics, are they just riding south or are they looking like, okay, we need to figure out where they went? Okay. It looks like they're they're riding with intent. Mm -hmm. Like they're like there's some talking and then they're riding and all twelve of them okay. are gone, but they're moving at a top like they're moving. Even in the rain, they're pushing their horses hard. Got it. Okay. Uh well I'm scared of this guy, so I'm not doing anything. He just goes, I watch you tell. I, I run. <laughs> <laughs> so he come back to the camp uh, where Laurel is meditating on his feet. Devere is slumping against something because you're exhausted, Devere. Philip, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm sure annoying Devere is high on that list. What's Bok doing? Just keep an eye on the surroundings. Okay, and what's Ishmatar doing? Just standing next to my horse, petting him and reassuring him that it'll be fine, even though well, it's really cold. Perrin and Esmeré are, are wiping down the horses and uh, brushing them and trying to get the water out of their cloaks and all that kind of stuff, out of their, their coats and all that sort of thing. In that uh, case, I'm overseeing them and making sure they're doing an adequate job. But this kid knows horses. This little boy, he knows what he's doing. Like, he's good with a horse. And he talks to the horses in his language. And the, and the way he's talking, you know, it's just like a child talking to horses. But the horses are, you know, they're very calm around him. He seems to be good with horses. What's his language? Othasian. Well, it's uh, it's uh, Salaric. It's the language of Othe. I speak that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, Ethan comes running back into the camp at a trot. Who's uh, who? Do I see first, Philip, Laurelin, or Sir Gerard? You see Navari first at the horses. Okay, so out of Laureline, Sir Gerard, or Philip, who do I see first? Uh, <laughs> Philip. <laughs> so, Philip, 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 Philip. I, I passed through my, my, my beer jug. Uh, if they haven't already passed us, they're coming back this way. They're coming back this way. Back and I go <laughs> to Sir Rusty. We must warn Sir Rusty of this. Oh, Sir Rusty. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
Bakht, give me a d20 roll, please. Two. Bakht, bakht, bakht. Gerhard, bakht. You can hear the horses riding south. You can hear, like, you're, you've been listening and listening, and then you heard, like, the... And they're heading south now. They're getting so far away, the thunder in the sky is actually louder than them at this point. I think they've gone. I can't hear them. The horse. What's that? What's what's the problem? Oh. What's going the, on? The knights that were following us have rode south very fast. Oh, well, that's fortunate. Are you sure? Well, yeah. That's what two scouts have said. And I trust Kirby. What else did you see in young Kirby? There are 10 to 12 uh, of the uh, Estradi. They uh, they were going back the way we came or way they came, and I wasn't sure if I got here before, but obviously we could just hear them. And I don't know if they're looking for us, but they're riding hard. Well, it seems they're going in the opposite direction. I kind of look up in the rain. I will consult the bones. I pull out some bones in my bag and roll them on the ground in front of me and then i look at esmeray and kind of do this so she hands her cloth to uh perrin and comes over yes what do the bones tell you she cocks her head bones <laughs> yes the bones really i i don't i don't no. read bones i read stars I scoop up the bones in frustration. <laughs> the bones read good fortune. I'd say we make for the roadhouse as I start shaking off more rain. That is a fun idea. Maybe they have hot food and cold. I'm willing to take a chance. How about the rest of you? Uh... I think it's in their favor. Come on, Kirby. We'll protect you. Okay. I think they, with the way he shoots, I think they're the other ones that need protection. Can't shoot inside a building. And you can't and shoot outside. for shit in the heavy rain like this. What? But I mean, do we know what's at this roadhouse? I mean, what if they told the people there to look out for us? I will go investigate. Yeah, I will go with you, Philip. The bones read good <laughs> fortune, and I trust the bones. Come. And I, I hardly yeah. start walking that way. Um, and then I stop as I looking around. Oh, what way is it? Looking at Philip. I point the way. Ah, very good. Yeah, you don't know the way, Philip. What are you talking about? So Philip follows in the right direction. Yeah, well, no, no, I, I no, use no. my no. land nav. No, no, you're not using your land nav. You're going to roll me a D8. <laughs> Three. So, Kirby, he clearly points not in the direction of the roadhouse. I'll let him I'll let him lead for just a moment in case maybe he knows that there's like a safe walking path or something, you know, just some nonsense. And as soon as I realize, no, we're not going, and then I'll say, hey, no, 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 I went that way. I went that way. Yes. Oh, I will. lead the way, Young of Fame. We were bypassing oh, puddle. That's scoop. what we were doing. Scoop. Is anybody waking me up? Why are you just gonna head up by yourself? Apparently, they're Ooh. not waking you up. They're leaving Bakht, Navari, and Devere. <laughs> oh, I'm going. I'm not sticking well, I around. I figured we were close enough to see. I mean, they're if he's sleeping, Devere that's a whole different story. But Navari, yeah, no, you, So Navari, you see them all leaving and heading in. But we're going to the roadhouse, and they all start walking off into the woods. You glance back and see Devere is sleeping against a tree. Devere's got if a squire see, now. If I see Devere sleeping as I'm passing No, no, him yeah, no, no, no. You guys went. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you sleeping. I noticed that the rest of them are leaving, and I think, where are they going? And then I noticed Sir Gerard just slumped against a tree, just sleeping. So I just gently nudge him on his rusty armor and wake him up. <laughs> for the record, his armor is not I know, rusty. I know, I know. Just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Julian? No, Sir Gerard, it's me. Oh, what a pity. What a pity. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Uh, um, You're in the same place that you uh, last thought you were. 
It seems uh, the others have uh, just absconded. They've what? Absconded. Abs absconded. Where? Where? Where to? Where to? The, over that Perrin, way. Where they gone? In the direction that they went. Perrin, where they gone? Uh, they they went uh, they went west, and now they 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 walk into woods. Horses, horses well, are good. Horses are good. Um, then, uh, Navri, I think we better follow them. Yes, okay. we can't stay here. Okay, yes. I get horses. Um, <laughs> he runs off to untie the horses. Um, take one child each on our horses. Um, no, Esmeri has gone with Laurelin, so you only have uh, Perrin. Perrin, Perrin, you'll um, uh, yes, yes, jump on my horse, uh, Navri. Um, we should be. You. Do you saw which one? I mount my horse as well. Yes, they went well, in that you, direction. You can't ride your point. horse in this woods. You, you'll knock your head off with a branch. You're walking okay. your horse. A kid can lean I'm down. I'm walking my horse. Um, all right, the, so you the, guys the start kids, following the them. The horse. And uh, Navari, since you're leading the way, I'm going to need a D20 roll, please. Uh, yes, sir. Navari, please give me your your physical mailing address on Discord. Oh, Hungar's already on it. Hungar's on okay, it. We're buying you dice. This. That's what we're doing. We're getting you dice, son. Oh, did you go to the I dice shop that. UK, uh, Philip? Uh, Hungar? No, I did not. I've you never. Did I got on you. Okay. Whatever. I got a one. Oh nice. God. Okay. So you guys are going west because that's the way they went. They went west. Meanwhile, you guys have fixed the western directory, the rest of you, and have started heading north uh, towards the uh, the roadhouse. Um, it sort of comes to your mind as you guys step out of the trees to where the roadhouse is, and there's sort of like a clearing around it, and the, like a, almost like a, not a meadow, but like a lawn, you know, for lack of a better term. You start to realize, where's Devere and Navari and, and the little French boy, you know, the little Athasian boy? They're, they're not with you. Oh, I was aware they weren't with us. We were going to go scout ahead and then come back for it. Oh, okay. Well, then that's fine then. Great. So you guys scout, you get to the roadhouse. So the roadhouse is now 50 feet ahead of you across this open sort of piece of grass. Grass. Philip, are you sure you're going to be okay? I, I'm going to be fine. Well, I don't see any knights. Uh, what do you see, Efain? Rain. You seem to have keen eyes. It's wet. Why don't you um me? go knock on the door? Yes, I walk, Philip said I walk, he was going to. I walk right up to the roadhouse and open the door. <laughs> okay, well, as you approach the roadhouse, you can see the placard hanging outside of it, and it has basically uh, a boar uh, on it, painted uh, bronze. There is fleck on the paint. The paint hasn't been kept up. And it says in um, Alboresh, uh, boar's head in. Uh, the brass, sorry, the brass boar in. Uh, and as you open up the door, uh, the smell of fire hits you, um, and a little bit of a sour, sort of mildewy scent washes over you as well, to be expected, I would one would think. And the smell of yeast uh, also sort of hits you, that sort of that off-putting bar smell. And uh, as you open the door, you see a tall, thin, balding man with a mustache behind him. He goes, my God, close the door! Door, it's quite wet and cold. And he looks at him and goes, Oh, bloody friar, don't need a friar. What do you no, no charity here? You must go find a church, sir. I have coin. Oh, <laughs> coin, you say. Come in, come in, be warm, please, please. I'm Basil Boar's head. I am the proprietor of this establishment. How may I help you, sir? Do you have food ready? Of course. Polly, food, quickly. Can no, I ask you a question? Did you see a group of knights pass by? Oh, yes. They were looking for a, a group of people. It was quite off-putting. They, they spoke that bloody Astorian <laughs> language. Just a bunch of silly sort of... Zoom, 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 zoom. I don't understand them. Idiots, a lot of them. I told them to be on their way if they weren't buying anything. They don't drink. I don't trust men who don't drink. That's the truth of it. Now, please, have a seat, and we will get you some food and a drink. We're gonna, I'm going to need food and drink for seven. You are quite large, yes, and seven will be then. You are, as he sort of just 
pats you on the stomach. Indeed, seven. My goodness, we have a healthy... Polly, we need food, quickly. <laughs> I will walk out. I was like, I will be right back. And I go out and tell the guys. Oh, around the back to the left is where you'll find it. Yeah, thank you. I tell, I tell the party to come on. Uh, how far uh, back is our camp? Uh, your camp is about <clears throat> 500 yards back into the woods. A Thane, go fetch the rest of the party, will you? Thane, That's a good go lad. The door. Thane, go get the pet, everybody. All right. Turn around and like, go back. <laughs> no <laughs> grumbling, of Thane. <laughs> so Esmeri just sort of tugs on your sleeve a little bit, Lorlin. What is it? Be nice. What did you say? Be nice. I am being nice. No, you're being devere. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rain gets me grumpy, okay? I tell I tell the guys I'm like, like that and then just sort of pats you on the back. So was that Philip? I, I tell the guys that the barkeep said that the knights were here, but he didn't understand the word they said. So we shoot them away. So I go in and sit down. By the well, you're back. You found the the, 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 the privy. You, 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 you sorted all that out, yes? Sorted good, out. Good, 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 good. And are the rest of you coming in at this point? Uh, I yeah. start walking towards the roadhouse. Yeah. Well, you're in front of it, so, you know. Yeah. He, he well, I was going to the side point. off the road looking, make sure it was clear. Once oh, I okay. So, clear, so Philip then, worked uh, with an appetite because he went all the way back and all the way finished. Well, so I'm, I'm going back to where the yeah. camp was. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to need a land navigation from you, Kirby, with a minus 10 because of the weather and all that. Garbage. Don't have land nav. I have wilderness survival. That is all you uh, get. You can have wilderness survival with a minus 5. Okay. Uh, not even close. I Nope. <laughs> no chance. So now you're wandering around the woods. Meanwhile, you, the other three, have been getting deeper and deeper into the woods, and it's been about 5, 10 minutes. You, you're quite sure you're lost at this point in time. Navri, are you sure they went this way? I'm pretty sure. It, it, it's just that um, I don't remember these woods, and I don't remember them being quite this thick. Um, maybe we should retrace our steps. Uh, you, you have remembered which way we came, haven't you? Did you hear that, Sir Gerard? I thought that was your stomach. No, no, I, I'm not Philip. No, you're, no, 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 you're not Philip. No, I should have known that. Um, you mean the 20 that? rolls, the two of you, please? <laughs> what would you get? Three. Three. <laughs> My dice hate me. Your horses are getting very uncomfortable. They're starting to sort of seem like something's wrong. Just wait for phone boy to return. Oh. <laughs> What'd you get? I got three. Okay. So yeah, the horses are upset, but you guys don't see shit until you then become very aware that you are currently surrounded by a whole bunch of guys who look exactly like the Beast Boy that's been following along with you. Except they don't look like the Beast Boy, and they're looking at you like your lunch. Uh, we appear to have a spot of uh, spot of bother, Navri. These appear to be um, box pets. I mean, these aren't house trained by the looks of things. We've lost like Navri. He, he it's just like <laughs> He just faints. <laughs> well, we'll cut from there uh, while we wait for him to reconnect. Uh, back to a Thane wandering in the woods, quite lost at this point in time. And then as you're sort of like looking around, what are you doing? Like, you, you've got no clue where you're going. Do I at least have a clue the direction of the road? Even if it's you know how, that way-ish. You, hmm? you can get back. You know how to get back. You can go backwards to where you came from, but to get forward to where they all are, you're getting a little bit lost. I didn't recognize anything coming this way. Like, as and I think I'm in the right spot, they may have left, or like, nope, I I screwed up. 
Give me another wilderness survival, please. Okay. No penalty. I make naughty. Sheep, she's getting worse. Nope. So you're like, you have no idea. Well, I'm cold and I'm so sort of, by now I would have found them. So something's, yeah, I got to backtrack until I know where the heck I am, which is the roadhouse. So I will go back to the roadhouse. To the best. Turn even, around? even if I have to follow the road closely, I'm going back to the roadhouse. So you turn around to start retracing your steps and sitting it, on a rock. It's not you working. First thing. We can hear you. Screw your Wi-Fi. Go to data. Um, <laughs> you uh, turn around and standing on a rock looking at you is what at first you think is Box Beastman. And then it's like the cold chill runs through you that that's not Box Beastman. And it's got a spear. And right. it's initiative. Okay. <laughs> it gets a 15. <clears throat> Make sure this is actually a 20. It's like it is. Wait, oh, with uh, my bonus, it still doesn't matter. I got a nine. You got a nine? So it lunges at you with the spear, and it attacks. It gets an 18. What are you doing? I'm going to try to dodge because I don't have any weapons out. You got your bow still, don't you? You can use that as a parry. That doesn't make sense to me. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen men do it, but that's okay. Uh. So 12 plus my parry bonus, which I don't think is a five. It is no, it's a three. So uh, I did yep. not parry. Or so what's so. your armor rating? Armor rating is 13. So this goes through the armor and straight to your personal SDC. Seven points. Ouch. As the spear sort of cuts through the side of you, right under the gap in the arm and the sleeve. Your oh. action. What are you doing? Uh, I'm still going to, I'm going to try to run. I, my, yep. my whole premise is speed. So I'm going to try to run out of there. I don't... I'll run through trees if I have to. So you're going to so, run deeper into the woods because that's otherwise. No, no. You well, it's still, I'm still going to try to go in the direction of the of the road, He's blocking the direction you want to go. I under understood that, that I'm not going to run right at him, but my goal is to get in that direction. So if okay. I have to be somewhat close, and he gets another attack, he gets another attack. But I, okay. I'm not going to get myself more lost. We'll give him another attack. Okay. Nine. Uh. Well, I'm still trying to dodge. Okay. Uh, I got a 14. So you managed to duck around him, and now you can break for the road. Yeah. Uh, what's your speed? Well, uh, well, now it's down to 30. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, because the cap's at 30. So you're at 30 speed as you're running. Uh, give me a PP check. Roll under your PP on a D20, please. Uh-oh. Uh, no, I made it. Cause, okay, I, I rolled a 15. My physical prowess is 21. Okay, so you're basically slipping on the mud, but you managed to get some traction and keep running. He throws the spear at you because you're, you're faster than him, which is impressive. 17. Ouch. I'm still going to try to dodge. <sighs> rolled a one. Oh! So through your armor, 11 points of damage. God your SDC is the spear chunks into your shoulder as you break out of the woods into the clearing, seeing the, uh, the, uh, the roadhouse across the grass. Yeah, I'm sprinting. I, I'm, I'm still up. So, I mean, I'm sprinting uh, to get to there. I'll bounce off the door if I have to, I don't care. Okay. So you're running for the door. Yes. So meanwhile, the rest of you were going, while he was doing that, the rest of you were going into the roadhouse, right? Yes. Is that accurate for everybody? Yeah, right. Congar, are you coming back? Yeah. So they come in as he looks up and he goes, There's a one, two, three. Oh my. Well, well, there's a lot of you. Hello, hello. It was a busy night. Well, that's good. You have coin, yes? Coin? You drink? Yes? Yeah. Um Yes, coin. Um Yes, we have coin. Of course. Yes, I have coin. Oh, Philip, good, good to down, see you, sir. Little. That's our man right there that we're meeting. Bloody hell. Friars and woodsmen and my have a seat. Yes, of course. Polly, have a seat. We're going to take care of you. No problem at all. Wine, ale, what's your preference? Oh, just some wine for me, Bart. What what are you having? Wine. Wine, yes, wine. Very good, very good. I'll get you wine. Please be seated. Don't break anything. Don't start any fires. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Good, 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 good. And he runs on dashes off into the kitchen like a long-legged freak. 
Meanwhile, you hear <laughs> against the door. <laughs> what was that? I I'm walked to the, the door, door casually and opened the door. So as you open the door, you see basically Kirby on one knee, a spear sticking out of his back. Oh and then God, behind him in the rain, you can see a beast man running towards you, like running, full tilt boogie. I'm trying to I'm crawl grabbing. inside once the door is open. I grab I'm Kirby grabbing. and pull oh, him out. Oh, oh, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Kirby first, since he's the wounded party. What are you doing? I'm trying, just trying to crawl inside. Okay. Bokt, what are you doing? I'm going to help him get inside as quickly as, he, I, as we, I can. So you're pulling oh. Philip, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm looking at his wound using my doctor still. Okay. And Laurelin, what are you doing? Cloud of slumber on the beast man. Okay, what does that do? You have to tell me what your spells do. Yep. Uh, it'll put him to sleep. He might get a save. He should get a save. I would hope I he would gets a so. save. Uh... Hey, uh, Iman, why don't you turn off the Wi-Fi and go on your data? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a magic save. It's a magic save, okay. <laughs> so he's like... <sighs> Face first in the mud. Close the bloody door. I'm not heating the outside. And oh my, what happened to him? Who are you? What's going on? I don't understand. Polly! So this is Calm down, going. sir. It'd be quite good. A fame. What happened? It so hurts. Give me a first aid check. I got a 19. Ooh. What's your percentage chance? My percentage chance at doctor is 30. And what does it do when you succeed on the skill check? It, I have no. Fuck the first, the first roll is to diagnose. The up, second roll you... is to treat. Yeah. So why don't you look your skills up, guys? Please. I your will. Onus. Your onus, like a spellcaster, is to know what your shit does. So first roll is to diagnose. Throw... Di here's the diagnosis: a spear is sticking out of his back, but no vitals have been hit. Yes. And a twenty-two to treat. Okay, look up what that treatment does. Back to the role playing for the others while this is happening. Younger Fane, what happened? I, I was running and and I couldn't find him. And then I saw the yeah, beast yeah, man. Take a drink. Rock, take a drink. Rock, take it slow. Hmm. Compose uh, yourself. Brock, now tell Brock, us what happened. Saw Brock's beast man, but, but, but it wasn't Brock's beast man. It hurts. Get, Fill it. get it out. Hot. We have to go find the others. Come on. I start walking out the door. Is he and... bleeding on my floor? You, can, you can't bleed on my floor. You're not allowed to do that. I forbid it. I, I forbid it. You may not bleed on my floor. I don't want to bleed on your floor. We'll clean up the blood later, sir. Come along. I start walking out the door, and as I'm passing, I uh, bash the beast, beast man over the head with my uh, staff. Trying to draw it? Yes. Ooh, bloodthirsty. Give me a d20 roll. If you succeed, you'll kill it. If you fail, you might wake it up. <laughs> 18. Yeah, that'll do it as you basically crush its skull with the base of your staff, uh, which Bach, you saw that. He quite casually and coldly just walked up and went right through its skull with his uh, metal bottomed staff. So Bacht and uh, Laurelin are heading out. Esmeray is staying with Philip to help treat Kirby. Did you get that skill result yet, uh, Philip? Um, look, I'm looking for the skill stuff in the book. Dude. All right. I will help you out. What skill are you looking for? Help me. Uh, first, or the doctor skill. Well, this would probably be first aid. It's first aid. Yeah. I don't think you're performing any surgery or pathology on me yet. Well, that would be funny. <laughs> Physical, military. Medical doctor, right? Medical. Yeah, first aid. Yeah. Uh, Rudimentary medical treatment, which is um, stop bleeding, and Mr. Wimbim, CPR, it does literally nothing other than stop you from bleeding. So, congratulations. You're no longer bleeding. Yes. Well, I'm pretty sure he's happy he's not bleeding. Yes, but you don't get any SDC back from it. Yeah, that okay, takes so that, 
that's what you guys are doing in there. So you two are heading into the woods. Now, how are you going to yeah. track where you're going to? I start trying to go towards the direction and look back to Bach. Do you have any clue where um, the camp was, sir? Well, I got wilderness survival. Nope, I don't know where it is. 32 against the 30. Well, we'll have to take our chances then. No time to waste. Come along. I just okay. dive into, head the into the woods. Meanwhile, back where you two were facing off against all of these beastmen, I'm going to need a roll for initiative, boys. Give How many are we looking at? The car. There are five of them. Okay. Uh, they get a grand total of five on their initiative. Twelve. We'll wait for Iman to try and roll his dice, disconnect, vanish five times, and then come back. This should be good. <laughs> hey, Bear, since I uh, did everything with a 33, uh, can you tell me what a 30 D20. 30? Sorry, what? D20. Yeah. Uh, yes, Eight. D20. 18. Do you have an, you got a total of 18? Okay, what was your question, uh, Max? Sorry, uh, can you tell me what a 30 is for the bonus to initiative? Because I have it written five. up for a 33. Okay, five, okay. That's five. Yeah. Again, and the only reason I'm doing that is because they clearly state in Rifts that 30 is the human maximum without magic or technology. So it makes no five. sense to have speed of, you know, I run like Hermes. <laughs> what? All right, so you 18 is the highest, so you go first. What are you doing, Navari? Drawing a sword is a free thing, and you're on mute. Yeah, so if I don't already have my sword drawn, I draw my sword. Okay, that's a free action. Um, can I use any of my, the skills that I have? Well, what would you think you would want to use? Um, He's not looking at you uh, right now, John. He doesn't see what you're doing. I don't see what you're doing. He's he's telling you to attack. Uh, I don't know if hand-to-hand -hand expert would do anything. So what hand-to-hand -hand expert does is it just gives you bonuses to your attack. So if you tell me that you're going to attack them with your sword, that's what we would be looking at doing. Okay, yeah, so I'll attack with my sword. So you would then roll a d20 and you would add your to hit bonus at the bottom and tell me what you get. You need to get a five or higher to succeed. It says I get five attacks per round. No, you don't. You get three no. because that. if we look at the house rule, I took away that silly Rifts thing where you have endless amounts of Ginsu 2 attacks, <laughs> and you just have three. But you get one, so we do it round robin. Everybody takes one, and then we do two, and then we do three. Conduct an orchestra. That's funny. I got a five. So um, you hit, then... but it gets a parry. Did you have any bonus to hit on that? Uh, what am I looking at? Strike plus? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, strike plus one. So it's a six, so it tries to parry with its spear. It does. It basically knocks your your sword away from it as you attack at it. John, you're up next. Okay, I will uh, draw my sword, holding my shield proudly with my emblem, shout for Palabria. This is what all my training has come to, but this is the first time I've used it in earnest. Oh, 17 plus three for 20. 20. Wow. It gets a 19 total on its parry. So you just like its spear comes up to block. And like at the last second, you sort of bash the spear away with the, with the shield and then just grah, with the sword. Give me your damage, please. Seven. Now, here's where we're going to be talking about how I do combat a little bit differently when it comes to just goons and minions. I'm not interested in having protracted hit bag fights, hit point bag fights. So you basically stick your sword through and it goes right through its throat and it starts to gurgle. And as you pull it out, blood just poosh, as this one drops dead in front of you. Now they go. 
So there are still four left, two on each of you. So two attacking you, Gerard. You may have your parries. You can parry up to three, I believe, because you have uh, three attacks per round, right? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah, you both. So you can parry up to three attacks. There are two on you. You got free parries. 17 for the first one on you, Gerard. I have it, yeah. I have an AR. And four for the second one, so no. <laughs> so one of them is going to hit you. Are you parrying? Yes. Okay. Give me your parry check, please. 12 plus a parry of three for 15. 15, and I said it hit you with a 17, right? Yes. So it hits you, and it hits you high enough to go straight past your um, AR, your, your your armor. It went higher than your AR. Your AR is, actually, what's your AR? 15. Yeah, it went past. So that's going to be nine points of damage to your SDC. Navari. The first one gets a 15. The second one gets a nine. So they're both going to hit, but you have parries available to you. Please look up your parry bonus and then roll a d20 versus both of those. You want to equal or exceed. Uh, okay, so parry is plus three. Uh, I got oh. a... That's not good. I got a one for that one. So you get hit by that one. I got a 19 for the second one. So the second one you parry, but the first one hits you. Oh, and it hits you well. You take 11 SDC damage as it bites through your armor on the side and hits you. Oh. Okay, John, you have a second attack. What are you doing with it? Oh, sorry, no, it's Navari's I... second attack. Navari's first, I probably. No, yeah, Navari got an 18. Yeah. You're first Navari's. Wait, you sorry, what, what did they hit my SDC for? Yeah, you took 11. 11. 11, oh, fuck, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah, so I will uh, I'll roll to, to attack again. Okay, go ahead. Oh, great. I got a two plus one, which is three. So you miss. All right. Yep. Uh, five plus three for eight. Eight is a hit, but it is parried with a natural 20. As this one just sort of bashes your sword aside with its uh, spear. Uh, and now they take their second actions on you guys. So two on you, two on each of you still. So we'll start with Devere. Seven. 19. Parry. Parry of 8. So that, that deflects the 7, and now the 19. Oh. <laughs> yes, 20. Yeah, all right, so you, not, you, to parry, so you parry both those attacks. All right, Navari, for you, one tries to spear you for, ooh, 18. No. And the other one gets a 13. Sorry, seven. Okay. My apologies. It was a three, not a nine. So basically, eighteen and seven. It's eighteen and seven. Those are your parries. You got to beat. Oh no! Thirteen plus three. Um, Sixteen. Oh, I got twenty. That one's okay. Okay. Use a reroll on the first one. How many rerolls do we have? We have three. Use one. Three. Is it worth using one? It depends. On yeah. Hurt me for right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll use one. Use it. Okay. So reroll. Go ahead and reroll that parry that failed. You're going against 18 okay. still? 18 still. Oh, fuck off. Nope. Failed it. All right. Nine. So it went through your armor. You take one... Four points of SDC on that attack. John Ooh, and Navari are now down to your last attacks. Navari, your last attack on one of them. Please roll. How much Super Chat to get rid of their re-rolls asking for a friend? Oh. I'd say 10 bucks. <laughs> 10 bucks would empty that pool. Yeah. Uh, I got a 9 plus 1. 10. 10. Okay. It does not parry. Roll your damage, please. And you went past its oh. AR. So it's going straight what down. Do I roll Actually, for yeah, damage? No, they not roll your damage. Don't bother. You hit. So basically, you run that one through the gut. And then, John, your second one. 22. Uh, this like you and these guys are really on each other. It gets a 21 on its parry, like, this is stupid. <laughs> so, yeah, so that one again, you just like so you bash the other one thing, you think, and this one you just cut across, then a slice as its stomach opens up, and its entrails just pour out steaming into the rain as it drops gurgling. I snarl at the other two, the remaining two. Come on, now. one of them, the, the one that's left on you, just goes. <laughs> 
<clears throat> and looks like it's into you. The one, the two that are on Univari, actually, you killed one. The one that's the other one just looks and goes ay, ay, and just runs into the woods at full still. His morale has broken. Uh, Lorlin and Kirby, give me d20 rolls plus five. Okay, Gerard, do you have any actions left? No, we're out of actions. That's the end of the round, I believe. Yes, yes. Oh, no, now that the one left with you gets to attack you. What'd you get? 19. 19? Kirby? Sorry, I didn't understand why I was rolling, but four? Yeah. You can't roll, you can't roll uh, a four. Oh, <laughs> a nine, sorry. Nine. Okay, you can hear something in the distance. Uh, Lorlin, you can hear clanging and fighting in the distance. You know which direction to head. I'm going to head towards Shit. that direction. Okay. Speedily. There. Yeah. Shouldn't I be making the roll? Not. Oh, I'm sorry. Not. Kirby's not there. I yeah, apologize. I, I, I'm, I'm, that's what I say. My apologies. My apologies. 16. My apologies. Yeah, so you can, both can hear the battle. My apologies. Have an extra okay. roll for my fuck up. Throw one no, back into the pool. It happens. I know, but, you know, it deserves something. All right, so you guys know which way to head. You're heading that way. Now, that one trying to attack you, Gerard. Natural 20. <laughs> I haven't got any parries left, I don't think. Uh, you parried three times? Yeah, you have. Yes. So that's a straight up yes. hit that you're taking. And Ouch. because it's a natural 20, it's a critical hit, which means. Uh, can we use a reroll to make you reroll that? You can <laughs> not do that. No. Oh. And it's a reroll, oh. and if the party decides, then we should be able to. It's a party reroll, and the party wants you to reroll that shit. Yeah, that sounds nice, but it ain't happening. At the cost of two rerolls? Oh my god, look at this negotiation. <laughs> so, what you need to do is uh, give me a quick second. We have an established critical hit rule that we put into play, and I'm going to go and look at my pinned comment to see it. Uh, critical hit, natural 20 is a critical hit. It has, you have to make a save of 12 plus versus your poison. So if you have a bonus on that, that's great. Please go ahead and make that save for me. It was worth a try. It was worth a try. Seven. So that is going to be straight double damage to your SDs, to your, uh, sorry, regular regular damage to your hit points Ouch. as it finds a weak spot and slides through the armor. And you take nine hit points of damage. Ow, wow, 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 wow. Do you, you use the, the injury rule from Palladium now that he actually took hit point damage, which that means he actually has like a, a week long injury? Interesting. We'll look at that later when okay. if he survives the fight. <laughs> I'm down to five of fourteen. Okay, give me a um, uh, a PE roll. Roll under your PE on a D20, please. Yeah, that's easy enough. Eight. Okay, so you stagger back, but you're still on your feet and in the fight. Uh, initiative. Everybody who's in this fight, and that includes Laurelin and Gerhardt, to see if you show up. Give me initiative rolls. Fourteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Nineteen. Locked. One. Okay. You're up first, Devere. What are you doing? It's, it's growled at me and, st and hit me hard. I'm going to go back at it. And? <laughs> eight. Well, eight hits. <laughs> if it doesn't get its parry, it gets a two plus four. Six. You hit by two. Give me the damage. This is now turning into a little bit of a, an actual fight. Double six for 12 points. As basically you run your sword in its gut right up to the hilt. Lorlin, you come bursting through the woods as this beast man's back is to you, and you see a blade come straight through its back as blood gushes out at your feet. Vox sort of staggers up behind you, having slipped on the mud. And as you're standing there, you can feel the blood running over your, your gloves and down your arm as this thing's looking at you in its eyes. And even to its last moment of breath, you see its hate for you as it stares at you and then the light goes out of its eyes and it just slumps and falls off your sword. And as it does, you see Laurelin and Box standing behind it. Good Lord, so uh, what happened? Where's my squire? I have a sword to clean. So you, so Perrin comes running up from behind the horses with like a cloth and he starts rubbing your arm and then, Chevalier, Chevalier, you are up. Blessé, 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 Chevalier. You, you are injured. I'm fine. <coughs> <clears throat> fine, please. You do not look fine, Sir Devere. Um, but you did find work here today, sir. And I kind of clink on his pauldrons. It might crack. 
Put him, put him on, put him on horse. Help me, put him on horse. We get him someplace safe, please, please. Yes, yes. Buck, hurry, come here. And I start trying to help him on the horse. So you guys load Devere onto a horse. You are bleeding, sir, from that wound. You are bleeding badly. You can feel it. You're getting groggy. Safe. We have safe place, Monsieur. Monsieur. Yes, not far off. This way. And I start leading him back towards the uh, roadhouse. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the roadhouse. No, 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 no. This is not a bloody hospital. You cannot be bleeding on my floor, sir. What is going on? Who are you people? Why, have you, why are you here? As why are men in armor looking for you? I don't understand. Polly! How bad is it? How bad is it? Am I going to be okay? You're going to be fine. I slept three gold. Uh, brass. It's brass coins, right? So it's the, uh, the pounds and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I slept three of the highest denominations onto the counter and tell right. it's so going to be okay. Look. I'll get hot water and towels. And he goes up into the kitchen. And <laughs> water and Philip, Philip, am I, am I going to make it? You're fine. You're not even bleeding anymore. Well, it really hurts. But okay. okay. Have some beer. Esmeray holds out a little licorice looking stick and goes, please eat this. It will help you feel better. You got an extra one of those? <laughs> she gives you a side look. Please. Thank, thank you. Uh, I'll I'll chew on it. Once he says I'm okay, though, my attitude's changing to like, this is nothing but a scratch. You can feel it, though. It's throbbing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's still a hurt. And as you eat this little stick, you start to feel the pain (laughs) flow away. It's got a licorice cinnamony type taste. It's quite nice. And the more you eat eat stick. So uh, Basil Boar's head comes back. With a uh, bowl of uh, a pot of water and white, you know, fresh towels and all that. Anything else you need, sir? Anything else? Just some food and beer. Uh, you think that will help him? Food and beer? Yeah, it'll, it'll help me. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Good, 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 good. Polly! And he goes running off into the kitchen again. So you guys clean him up, and, uh, you know, as, as Marie is like, she takes out a needle and thread, and she's like, I will fix. Okay. I'm going to have a war wound. Okay. And so she she just basically pats your hand and then sits on the table behind you and starts stitching up your wound. But you're pretty fucking high right now. So it just feels weird. It doesn't feel pain. It just feels like, oh, this is weird. What's going on? But you're, you're, you're fine. You guys outside break out of the woods and you can see the, um, the uh, roadhouse across the lawn, again, about 50-odd feet. As you're moving up, you see the dead body of the wolf uh, beast man lying on the grass with a hole through its head. You don't see that, Devere, because you're bleeding out slowly but surely. In fact, I need you to give me a uh, death save, buddy. How do I do these? Poison. We'll give a call to poison save. Oh, three. Oh, so he slumps in the thing. And falls out of the saddle to the ground. Quickly, grab him by the legs. I've got it. I start picking up his arms. Chevalier! Chevalier! No! I'll grab him by the arms. So uh, Perrin's sort of like, huh? And then grabs the horse reins and starts leading the horses behind you quickly as you guys drag him in. And as they open the door, bringing in this bleeding out night, Basil's walking out of the kitchen with beer and food and just drops it all on the floor and goes, what in bloody hell is going on? What is... No, 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 why? No, 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 not possible. And um, are you doing it? I assure you, sir, it's, it's fine. Everything's fine here. Um, a little bit of um, your stoutest um, spirits, please. Go to bloody hospital. I throw another no, coin on the bar. Right, right. Yes, yes, very good, very good, very good. Yes, yes, more hot water. Yes, yes, Bullet! As he goes running off into the kitchen. I am going to assess Sir Russ Bucket's wounds. All right, so you got to take his armor off, which you do. Okay, are you going to get comfortable? You're just going to okay, I love you too, but are you going to get comfortable? I rolled an 11. You rolled an 11. So uh, on a percentile? Yes. He has a very bad bad, bad wound. He's bleeding out. He's getting pale. He's dying. We need to starch the wound, so I will treat. Uh, and I rode a 13. 
on the two dice. All right, get a death save with a plus two on it, please, Mr. Gerard Devere. Oh, finally. 17. So, if, he ble- if he bleeds out, can I have his horse? I ask the other guys. I'm sorry, what? I asked ask the guys that if he bleeds out, can I have his horse? So the little French Asian kid kicks you in the shin really hard. Like, really hard. Like, he's got sharp little shoes on. He's just like, the Chevalier Fox is not yours. You get nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, it's quite quite. Sure. Now is not the time for joking. We have a dying man here. Now, can you staunch his wounds or I'm not? I'm not dying. I've staunched his wounds. <laughs> I'm not dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. I've got his wound stotched up. So um I stopped the bleeding. Hour, but another hour goes by as you guys basically, you know, take care of him, get him warm, get the fire stoked up, eat, drink, what have you, get everything sort of in order for yourselves. Uh Mr. Boar's head is is vacillating between bribed and panicked and annoyed. This mysterious Polly has never once manifested herself from the kitchen, but eventually you guys are pretty fucking tired. Well, and I paid you, Yeah. I paid for for the food. So somebody else needs to pay for the lobby. I got or, it. I got you're it. Like, you're like falling asleep at the table type of thing. Like you guys are that tired. You know what I mean? And as the fire roars up in the heat, are oh, you going to go now after all that? Thank you. Uh, after the fire roared up, it's made it even warmer. And as a result, mm-hmm. you guys are even more tired. And I'm going to need everybody to make PE saves. Uh, roll under your PE on a D20 to stay awake, except for Devere and Kirby, who are passed out at this point. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I succeeded on a 12. I succeeded on a 5. Cool, you guys are awake. Good for you. What'd you? Uh, the rest of you? How'd you do? Uh, I got a five on my PE fourteen. Okay, so you guys are like forcing yourselves to stay awake because danger is afoot. Uh, did anybody fail that save? No. Okay, so you're all just sitting there, sort of like bug eyed, and you know, and, and finally, you know, Basil comes out and he's like, "All right, then." Um, we're closing everything down for the night. Um, the common room is yours. Do as you wish. Please don't burn anything, kill anyone, do any further surgeries. That would be appreciated at this point in time. And we shall see you in the morning for breakfast. Hopefully you won't have multiplied by then as the door opens and Ger- Gerhard's friend comes in covered in blood. Basil turns and goes, oh, and just faints. <laughs> onto the ground (laughs) and in his hand are the heads of three other beast folk and he's just like more coming here now and he just throws the heads behind him and walks in and sits down reaches for whoever's food is closest with a bloody fucking hand and just grabs a bunch of it and shoves it in his mouth I get up and lock the door. And we will take a quick break for people who want to get drinks, who want to uh, go to the bathroom or any of that stuff. It is currently 528 Eastern time. Let's meet back here at 35. So seven minute break. I'm going to make coffee. I just for all want of to you watching, out, show. have yourselves a quick moment to get a coffee and what have you. We'll be back at 535. So, oh. What's up, Max? I was going to say something for for the old geek, but I'll come back.
I'm back, everybody. Aha. Time to make fun of the old geek a little bit more and tell him that his armor didn't work very well because it's cheap and rusty. So far, this game is a lot of fun. I had never played Palladium until the first game that we did of this. And I do have to say, I'm really enjoying it. That's right, Law Dog. The we that weapon smith was right. That armor did not protect me. But that just gives me more things to make fun of the puffed up cloth merchant. See, I'm a eater, not a fighter. I would have done no good. I'm not worried about it. I, I think I could actually take the beer and a pot. <laughs> he, he's just a merchant, man. That was the first fight he's ever been in. He's a young idiot. I'm an old man. He's been wandering around with the staff. Ah, you're adorable. <laughs> I would have handled that fight a lot better, and I don't even have armor, but it's not like his armor is any good. I'm just scrolling back through the chat to see what I missed. Coral Herbert, we're doing fantastic, buddy. Still got two minutes. We're good. Yes, Lord Dog, the weaponsmith probably was right. <laughs> <laughs> funny. That's fucking funny. Oh, I can't wait until you're awake so I can make more fun of you. I I, I want to interact with Basil, but I haven't been able to yet because I've not been there. <laughs> you put on an even posher voice than him. What's this about on screen dice? What's going on with that? What's this? Oh, they want you to use OBS and, and no. an on-screen die roller. No. I have trust in my players not to cheat, and I would hope they have the same in me. I, I wish I would have cheated today. <laughs> yeah, 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 that rocks. Yeah, we wouldn't be having such bad rolls if we were cheating. I mean, yeah. This is why that's, I don't want to use a virtual table. That's only skating. rolled. Yeah. That's only rolled five or lower, or six, uh, mostly, or... Occasionally, sixteen or higher. There's nothing in between. It's wrong. I've got it's two natural. So I've got two natural ones, like yeah. in a row, and the, okay. one of them was good, but one of them was the worst. I but keep getting like the, like those those natural ones or whatever on rolls that kind of don't matter. It's like, and then it's like, okay, fight. Uh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> For real though, I I can't find that. Um, dice thing that you're telling me about but we do need to get the price sorry what say that again what, what's it there? Hunger? we need to get a mon some dice i will throw a so hang on I will, I will send you the link hunger hang on i will send you the link it's a uk dice shop right yeah it's it's uh, the dice shop online is what they're called i'm sending you the link right now hunger hang on awesome. i got it they're great, they're fast, their fucking prices are decent, and they have a fantastic selection of stuff. Here you go. Sending it to you on Discord, buddy. Thank you. I think here has got a point in that it would add to the excitement of chat if they could see us rolling. 
No, I get that. But listen, I tried to set up a dice rolling camera once upon a time. It is a logistical nightmare. So the only other option at that point in time is to use something like Roll20, which eats up most of the screen. And then as a result, it, I trust you guys. And you know what? If, if they don't like it, say la vie. I'm sorry. No offense to them. But this is a game we're playing, you know, to have fun, not to... We're not critical role. We don't have those kinds of resources, no, you know? True. I'm fine with the way it is. And, you know, sorry if people don't like it. I do apologize. Clearly, you have a preference. And I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying I've tried before. It's a nightmare. I'll, I'll go. I'll be the jerk in this one. I actually just don't like, I don't trust or like online rollers. Me neither. Uh, I, I want the cookie clack math rocks in my hands. Now, if I have to sit there and push the roll button, I'll do it. Like, you know, like, like when the one of the other games I'm in. But actually, most of the games I'm in allow us to roll like this. And I like having that tactile. But I do get what they're saying as far as people watching. It, it kind of I don't want to say it takes them out of it, but they don't they don't see what's going on. Like, yeah, you know, it's fair. But, but yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's not a lot I can do. You know, Dale, shut up. See, Dale's being a dick now. <laughs> and I love Nerds Nerd. I demand that you play your game the way that I most enjoy watching. I want to speak to the manager immediately. <laughs> Still, uh, you know what? For that Nerds Nerd, the price just went up to $20 to clear out all their rerolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your nickname is Karen now. Yeah. You, wow. You a, ner a nerd's Karen. A nerd's Karen. A nerd's Karen, yeah. You are no longer a Nighthawk. <laughs> Okay, so we are all back. All right, so basically he's told you there are more coming. You can hear the storm increasing intensity outside. What do you do? I lock the damn door. Yeah. Okay, so you throw the bar on the door. It's a roadhouse. There are windows. There's more than one entry point to this place. What are you guys going to do? Uh, for the record, uh, Perrin is absolutely useless as he's sitting there cleaning and mopping Chevalier de Vere's head. He's working with him. Uh, so he's not going to do anything else. Uh, so Gerard and Athane are passed out, right? Oh, yeah. Athane, Athane is like, he's got a smile <laughs> on his face as he's sleeping. <laughs> relaxed. Your girl's here. The beard's lost color. He, he's, he's taken a lot of damage on this one. Um, well, some of you military guys need to figure it out. Uh, Don't look around. I, shit. I'm looking around for any tools. Okay. So you guys are searching the place. Is that what you're doing? Like you're searching the roadhouse? Because there's nothing here. Yeah. It's a common room. There's not like, oh, look, a tool cast and a secret lock over there. And it's, you know, it's, like it's not a, you know, it's a real place. So yeah. you're going to have to go and look around. I'm going back if I have to. You're going in back? Um, if there's any okay. locked doors, I have pick locks. Here's what we're going to do. Laurelin, what are you doing? Navari, what are you doing? Gerard, what are you doing? Philip, what you're doing? In that order. Laurelin, what are you doing? I am standing, watching Philip lock the door, staff ready. I draw off my hood and preparing myself for okay. what's coming forth. Navari, what are you doing? After what the beast man told me, I stand with my um, sword ready to draw at the first sight of any trouble. And so I stand facing the door, just waiting for anything to... All like right, bash into it or something. So you're just ready. Bob, yeah. what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out how, a way to bar the doors. The, well, the one door is barred. Or windows, there, I mean. There are plenty of big tables. As you're looking at them, you realize, you know, two of you could lift those up. And if you had nails, you could nail them to the damn yeah. wall. But you don't, you got to find nails. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. So that's what you're thinking about doing. Philip, what do you do? I am looking around for a place too hot. <laughs> behind the bar perfect location behind, that's where the beer is yes it is I, just, I, I, walk, I casually walk behind the bar and hunker down <laughs> sitting beside a big breached cask of ale with a cup ah, all of a sudden I'm thinking Raiders of the Lost Ark I'm sorry you were thinking Raiders of the Lost Ark yeah the bar fight where they burned it down Oh yeah, no, it's raining, so that might be hard. I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can, but you know, it'd be hard to burn the place down. Let's not. Yeah. Give me uh, an intelligence check with a plus three, please, uh, Laurelin. I succeed. 
So you notice Esmeré is holding um, Sir Devere's hand, and you can hear her talking in the Jito language. But as you're watching her, you're starting to get the impression that there's something more going on here. And you remember that thing you can do where you can look and see? You feel like this may be a good time to do that. I look at her and Devere and do so. So as you pull back the veil, like I said, everything kind of goes like that warbly, sort of stormy look to everything. It gets the muted colors. And as she's talking and holding his hand, you see behind her three women, ghostly in form. An old woman, a young girl, and a modern, mature woman, like an adult woman. And they've got their hands on her shoulder as she's going, and just chanting and chanting and chanting. And then there's a flash, and the three women are gone, and you sort of close your third eye and like, oh. Sort of take yourself back. Devere, you get back five hit points. And 11 SDC. And then she sort of turns and looks at you. And she sort of smiles in that sort of childlike way she has. Everything okay, wise man? Everything is fine, Ismiri. Um, possibly. We'll see what comes. So, Gerhard, you're looking around for um, nails and shit? Yeah. Where are you looking? Where are you going? You're waking up, Devere. Kirby, give me a poison save, please. Oh, that won't work. 11, no. No. So you're actually no, because you have the uh, the chew doll, the chew thing yet. So you're going to get a plus two on that, which gives you a thirteen, which is a which is a yes, yep. Yes. So you're sort of you flitter your eyes awake, and you're sort of like your head is clearing. You feel a bit groggy, but you don't, you know. And then you feel the ah, uh, the ache of the wound that was recently stitched. Like ah, oh, yeah, that's there, right? I can't believe I have to throw treats at my cats to get them to shut up. <laughs> They figured out the economy. They know how it works. Um, all right. So where are you looking, Bacht? I don't know. I don't know. So as you sit up, Kirby, you see Bach just sort of looking around, rubbing his chin like, like he's trying to think. You don't know what's going on. Then you see the beast man covered in the blood looking out the window going. I back up. All right. I skitter back if, like. Back to the bar or whatever is behind me. The bar gets bumped, Philip. As someone's bumped into the bar. Hey, watch out. You watch out. There's a beast man in here. He's with us all the time. What what day is today? I don't know. <laughs> want a beer? No, I want to go home. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, uh, we're getting attacked by beastmen. Whoa, where? Whoa. Where am I? And then you see a as you sit up and look around, you're sort of feeling a bit better, Devere, like you feel warmer and flush, and you sort of see, you know, things are going around and that sort of jars your adrenaline. And then you notice the passed out tall, thin man with a mustache on the floor. Who? Who? What? Who's that? Mr. Boar's head. The, the last thing I remember is handing my sword to Perrin to clean. So, uh, Squire, Squire, um, yeah, Chevalier, Chevalier. Do you have my blade? It's clean. You see, see, you see, you see. And he holds up your sword. Thank you, Squire. Um, where am I? What's happened? We are, we are in Roadhouse. You were badly wounded, but now you are okay. It, look, I don't know what happened there. It's weird. And uh, now uh, animal, men, animal men are outside going to attack us. And that, I don't know, is uh, he was on the floor when I came in. Then he clearly is not of, made of brave stuff. And I guess I'll see Navri stood there. Mm -hmm. So, Gerard, you were gravely injured in battle. We had to bring you to the closest place we could find as soon as possible. So I was I. Well, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> you were? Shall we compare scars, young man? His was much worse than yours. Your armor did not help at all. 
They are coming. I'll stagger to my feet, hold my sword, and stand next to Navri and say, "This is what isn't this what they call déjà vu?" Indeed, looks like we must prepare ourselves for yet another battle, Sir Gerard. I am proud to stand. Are you feeling well? Better than I was. Well enough to fight? If it must be that way, then yes, I am well enough to fight. You hear a howl from outside, a long animalistic howl. This, and then you hear it answered once, twice, five. Ten. Block the count. It's coming from all around. I kind of, I'm already standing out in front of everybody and look at, look back just over my shoulder idly. So, Devere, it's good to see you back up again, but now's not the time for idle chit chat. I would recommend you prepare yourselves. I am prepared. Can I flip over a table? Yeah. I mean, or, or, okay, I just want to make sure. I'm going to flip over a table, pull out my two daggers, or knives, and. Well, oh, they're daggers. I assume they're, they're you know. Are you, are they like knives? Like, you mean like little they're fight, knives? They're, no, 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 no. They're not like kitchen knives. They're knife knives. Like, you know, but yeah, they're, they're like knives. fighting knives. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're single bladed, not table. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am dragging Basil. Is that his name? The boar's head guy? I'm dragging him back behind the bar. So you put him down beside Philip, who's drinking. Yes. And Philip has now found a box or a, a cask of like uh, crackers. So he's like, you know, shoving crackers in his mouth with his beer. I'm going to need a poison save from you, drinky. Roll a d20. You need a 12 or higher if you have any modifiers on your poison save. Two. Two. <clears throat> Fucking <throat> drunk, buddy. <laughs> well, we're getting ready to fight a bunch of freaking beasts, man. Of course I'm drunk. He's, you look at him like, you, as, 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 you, as you drag Basil, you look up at Philip, and he's just got kind of like the look on his <laughs> face. I stand up with my quarter staff, and I'm like, let's show these beasts. <gasps> give, me a, floor. give me a PP check with a uh, <laughs> minus four to your PP, please. The PP. So he says he's gonna let get and he just falls back through like, 19 you know, falls back through a bunch of the shit, knocking a bunch of stuff down and just sort of lands on his ass with one arm in the cask, you know. Philip is hammered. Now, Bach, you don't have a lot of experience with this because Astradi don't drink, they don't fuck, they don't do anything. You know what I mean? They are the most boring yeah. creatures on, on God's earth. So it's just he just looks insane to you. That that's right, Dale. I'm not drunk. I'm inebriated with a potion of bravery. <laughs> <laughs> so Esmeray pulls on your shirt, uh, Lorman. What is it? Do something. She looks at them all and like you know they're like I can fight and crash tinkle tinkle flips up a fucking thing two knives out. She's like, do something or we're going to die. Right. I suggest we um, leave. Is there a, a back door? I start running towards the back. So the kitchen, there's usually a kitchen in the kitchen. Might have been a bad idea. What, a, what about the passed out guy? Can't leave him here. Drag him along. Let's go. I was not bred to run. The door to the we kitchen opens. Highly outnumbered, sir. The door to the kitchen opens and a short pudgy, blonde, middle-aged woman, this must be the aforementioned Polly, mm -hmm. comes walking out, looks around at all this, she goes, no, fuck no, not today, no, and just turns around <laughs> and walks back into the kitchen. <laughs> that I suggest you uh, speak to her. No, she's gone, gone back to the kitchen, the okay. door's closed, she doesn't give a shit at this point, she's like, nope, not handling it. <clears throat> Sir Gerard, yeah. cover the rear, we need to get out of here. I start making my way towards the back, seeing if yeah. I can find a back door. But these people in this inn are innocent. These creatures will tear them from limb from limb. I'm with you, Central We can't just leave them. We're not leaving them. We're bringing them with us. Gather them. We're leaving. Out the back door. Can somebody grab his feet? I got his arms. 
So I'll grab his feet. What do you say, Sir Gerard? Tactical retreat? We're not running. This is a tactical retreat. Whose feet are we grabbing? Am I able to walk? <laughs> you pull You're grabbing your bar. own feet. Whose feet yeah. are we grabbing? <laughs> Okay, I will. I will ensure the. I will ensure the lady in the kitchen is safe. So you guys pull Basil into the kitchen where Polly is now, like basically just like locking windows, and she's like, "If you're leaving, leave through that door." And she's just starting to put down hatches and put bars, and she's just she's like, "You are leaving as well." Bloody hell, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, in all I'm good not. conscience, Miss, we can't leave you here. In all good conscience, you can fuck right off. This is my home. <laughs> yeah, son, uh, slumber. Cloud of slumber on her. Hey. <laughs> nah, she goes, I need that furthermore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll pick her up. Pick her up. Oh, you, you, you pick, you go, oh, oh, no, no, you're not picking the, up. The, shit. Did, I'll, did, I'll, I'll hand it. I'll hand it to Navri. Navri, Navri. Yeah. <laughs> did, did somebody grab the cash out of the register? There's no register. <laughs> out, the out, of the, out of the claim box. Somebody we grab the cash box. We can't leave their money here for the beef bin. <clears throat> Philip, get yourself together. We have a situation. Have, we have to leave. Go, go, go. You hear the door? Open. I am. You yeah. hear that? You hear the bar from the the, near the inn that, that you put on. You hear it clang to the floor, and then you hear the door open. And then from just outside where you guys are, you hear a fucking like a growling howl shouted out from where you are. As you look around and realize Box Pet is not in the room. Bad dog. Oh, shit. shit. There's the back oh. door. Fuck. Summon him quickly. Bring him back. The only answer is to you. No, we can't. I'm poking my him. head out into the common room. Come the on, door is closed. He's not there. We can't leave him. Drop the lady. We have to go after him. I started heading back to the front. So Perrin just looks at you and goes, Pourquoi, Chevalier? Why do we have to go after him? Why? Because he will get killed. He's one of us, so we can't do this without, unless all of us are together in this. He's looking right at you, but he, he doesn't even seem to hear Laurel, and he's looking at Devere for instruction. I have more important people to protect than Gerhard's pet. We well, can't do it. I don't want to fight you. these monsters. They hurt. We're a group, and he's part of it. And he has to be with us. He's chosen to leave remember. us. Remember, he's, he's chosen, chosen to, leave to us. fight for us. Are you a knight, or are you a merchant? I have a duty of care for those under my stewardship. Who's under your stewardship? Perrin. He can hide. Let's fight. <clears throat> and get me a beer. <laughs> You've had quite enough. You're I just wish I afraid. could join you. I wish you're I could join afraid. you, but this is not the time for it. You're just afraid your armor won't stand up. I'm not afraid. I'm yes. trying to use a bit of common sense. Let's go. I'm, and I'm, I, I'm, I go I'm out the front door. I go out the front door. To okay. You're allowed to be afraid. You're a peasant. <laughs> As you step out the front door, you see Gerhardt's pet is about 20 feet ahead of the, the the roadhouse, standing out in the rain, and he's just standing there with his arms at his side with, like, no weapons, just claws, and he's looking, and as you look up, you see a couple dozen beast men all around the edge of the field, and at the very far end, the biggest, meanest-looking one you've ever seen is slowly walking towards him. I go up there and stand beside him. I stumble. I, he just turns and looks at you and goes, Go now. I I, I I stagger back and fall on my ass. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Navri, Navri, do we? Shall we? Shall we stand by our comrade? It would be the noble up. thing to do, and I would be very proud to fight alongside you, Sir Gerard. Then come. What is wrong with I you? <laughs> I stride forward and stand beside the beast man. As 
Yeah, I'm already standing beside him. And again, I'm, as you guys get close to him, he turns like he did with Philip and goes, back. Challenge. We will not challenge. Have it's a challenge to all of us. And I cast no. uh, energy field. We can't us. leave you to do this alone. There's too many of them. You'll surely he's, perish without our help. He, he's, uh, he's fighting the big guy. Let's watch it. Somebody help me up and get me a beer. Let so he, he looks at you, Laurelin, and he just goes, I fight, you run. I we die, I die, you're safe. I win, they leave. Well, we stand beside you either way. And you can see he's frustrated that he doesn't have the words to explain to you what he's doing. We need to go. If he wins the fight, they will back off and let us alone. He can't take all of them. Again, you see this. Big, but now it's this a big one-on-one one challenge. And it's looking at the rest of you. And it sort of goes <clears throat> over its shoulder. We must. And okay. they all start all moving it. forward. I start understanding what's happening. And I pat the beastman on the back and cast energy field on him. <laughs> and then back off. And I say, everyone, back away. Let him what do what he needs to do. Correct. It we gives him a uh, challenge. 60 uh, STC. Okay. But we will not leave. We will no. watch and provide support. He just hangs his head because, like, you he know, you can see he had the plan and you guys aren't part of it all of a sudden. And he's just like, like <sighs> and then he just starts walking towards the big guy. The ones that were walking up now stop and just hang back watching all of you to see what you guys do. No way you're wrong. I'm yeah. still in the roadhouse. I was, yeah. you know, I was holding <laughs> somebody's shoulders. Maybe he's on the ground now, but uh, I, I did I did not go out. So you're staying inside. Okay. <coughs> and Esmeré is like at the door and she just looks at you and she goes, I, I don't know what's going on. It is an honor tool. No, she's talking to Kirby. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, st I stagger, I stagger back into the roadhouse. You're sitting on your ass right now. Let these two have their <laughs> moment. I just gotta go get a beer. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't want to fight them. I don't know what to tell you. But I stand with the wise men. And she walks out into the rain and heads towards Lorian. Lorelan. No, she heads to Lorian. Fuck this. She's going to go hang out with Galadriel. She's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I back. I respectfully back up about 20 paces and hold the locket, Jelaine's locket, and whisper a prayer. But I'm going to leave the beast man to fight. It's what he wants. Okay. They charge at each other. I'm going to make three rolls for each of them to see how they do. Your boy gets the first strike in. A nice one. Right across the side, causing blood to spurt out. That's countered by the other one biting him into the neck and shoulder and tearing out a chunk of muscle with his teeth. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And then grabs him by the throat and rips down as you see, like, the throat of Gerhardt's boy come pulling out. And then he just sort of staggers and drops flat. And the big one stares right at you, Laurel William. Honor. Grabs your beast by the oh, leg, turns talking around, and starts walking watch. back towards his people. I let him I let him do what he's doing, and I start slowly backing away and motioning with my staff for everybody to back away back into the roadhouse. What are the rest of you doing? I'm getting up and walking away back to the roadhouse. Yeah. Aggrantly drunk. He starts following the beast man accidentally. Bach, as I'm you're watching, 
as you're sort of watching this, you can see your friend's chest is still moving. Oh. He's still alive. What are you doing, Bok? I need an answer, sir. I know, I know. You could still cover that ground. You could still get to him. Fuck it, I'm doing it. So you guys see Bach just start running full tilt across the field with his bastard sword over his shoulder in an attack position. You close the distance. The beast man, at the last second, turns his head and looks back at you. You get one free shot with a plus five, and then after that, it's initiative. Wait a second. <laughs> Is this the really big, scary one? Yeah. Okay. 22. He tries to get out of the way. He does not, as your sword bites into him. Roll damage. Thirteen. Thirteen, as your sword bites down into his neck and into his clavicle, so you can hear the bone split and splinter as you hit into him. A gush of blood forms out. He staggers back. The rest of you see this. The 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 the, the herd now goes ah and starts getting real fucking angry. Initiative, everyone. Even if we're still inside, not paying attention. Well, you can stay inside, not paying attention. <laughs> That's fine. 13. Okay. Four. Seven. 14, seven. Eight. Four. I thought you were going inside for a beer. Well, I was stumbling, and when I see these guys watch Gerard, uh, Bach, I'm like, let's go up. What? Okay, that's fair. Clavicle is the collarbone. Did I say clavicle? What did I say? I thought you I said, said clavicle. clavicle. Yeah, it's the clavicle yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> Dale says you can always shoot your bow from inside. Uh -huh. um, okay, so sorry. So the highest on your side was what? 14. 14. They got an 8. So you go first, Devere. What are you doing? I'm going to <clears throat> run forward and um, join Bokt in Mortal Kombat. With the big boy? Uh, with the big boy. Roll the hit, sir, as you run up with this swing that sword. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> 22. 22. He does not block it. Give me the damage. Six. So, bam, you hit him on the other, on the shoulder on the far side, your sword biting into his uh, deltoid area and sort of hit, you feel it hit the bone. It's a pretty good hit. Next highest initiative on your side? I got a 13. You're next. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, how many are there? Uh, about two dozen. Okay. I'm going to cast to the back of the crowd, cloud of slumber on the back of him. So it's a 20 by 20 area. You better learn some new fucking spells. <laughs> Just right. saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right. You're getting a little fucking Xbox spam that button thing, but that's okay. So they got to make spam sure. That. Spam that. So button. 20 by 20, you're going to be able to get, we'll say a D12. We'll say 2D6 worth of them, okay? So actually, you go ahead and roll 2D6 and tell me how many you're going to get. All right. Seven. Seven. So I'll do one lot of five and one lot of two. Lot of five. Lot of two. 
So basically, you put seven of the two dozen out of the fight. There is now about 15 left. Bam that button. Next Bam. highest initiative after 13. You. Uh, Navari, what did you get? Iman. Uh, I got Three seven. Nine. Oh, okay. sorry. Box, what did you get? I got seven. Four. So what did you I get? I got seven? eight. 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 Okay. They were on seven, I believe. So that means Philip goes next. What's Philip doing? Come at me, bro. And I charge him with my stack. Staggering boredom. So your story, what's your speed? Uh, speed is 13. Yeah, you'll be there next round. <laughs> okay. Like, like, uh, uh, running across the field. It's kind of zigzagging. On seven, they start moving forward, and they will be closing the gap, but they will not be able to attack until next round. So anyone else had a seven for initiative? Me, yeah. What are you doing? Uh, so I noticed that Sir Gerard has struck a decent blow on the big, scary one, so I try and attack him as well. What's your speed, please? Uh, Ten. Yeah, you're only closing to him, so that's fine. You can get there. Okay. Oh, roll to hit, please. Oh, yeah, I'm His on. diet... His dice is on the way. Excellent. Uh, 14 plus 1, 15. 15. He does not block that with a grand total of 12. Give me the damage, please. Uh, what's that? <laughs> what kind of weapon are what you kind using? of weapon? Uh, sword. D6. Which 2D6 or 1D6? 2D6. 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 2D6 is a 4. <laughs> Do you have any damage bonus? Uh, do, 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 do. no damage bonus, no. Okay, so you hit him for four points as you basically cut him across one of his biceps, opening the muscle up. Anybody else left to go? Oh, yes, Bacht. What are you doing? Attacking him again. 19. Okay. He does not parry. Eleven. As your sword, as you pull it out of his out of the clavicle on one side, swing it over your head with the two-handed technique you know, and bring it fully across his neck, sending his head flying where it lands in the mud as his body drops and blood is spurting out. The beasts stop dead. And they all look and they start growling and looking at each other and growling and looking at each other. They seem unsure what to do. Second actions. Cody, you're first. What are you doing? Don't have one. Don't have one? You only have one action around? No, well, spell cost two. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Devere? I'm going to stand over the body of their, of the vanqu their vanquished. Can't hear you too far from the mic. Oh, sorry. I'm going to stand over the body of their van uh, vanquished leader. Sword and shield at the ready, as if to say, dare you. Give me an intimidation check, please. Do you have any intimidation? Ooh, that's a good question, eh? Uh, 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 no. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> right, well, I'll give you a 10% chance on this one. Uh, and I've rolled 93. So they all start just going <laughs> like they're kind of they're kind of amused almost at this point. They're starting to build up a head. Next up would be Philip. What are you doing? You've now reached I, the rest of the party. I shake my stab on the get out of here. <laughs> Go on, get. get. It. <laughs> Gerard, Fire big boy. Cool to try that intimidation again now that you've got a drunk hillbilly monk beside you going, Go on, get it. <laughs> no, you're not gonna use one of the rerolls, okay? I, yeah, I can. I, I mean, yeah, I've got a 10% chance, so I'm not. No, you have a 15 because you got a crazy maniac, fucking weirdo beside you who looks like death with fat. It's insane, they're, they're, it's crazy. What's going on. <laughs> I, I, I also have a logic. D10, a D10 that's rolling nothing, nothing less than a six so far, so. Oh, I've rolled a one with the first one. All right, you got a one and you got a... 14. On the money. 
with 1% luck. Basically, he's like, oh, go on, get! And then I guess Navari steps up at that point as well. And I'm sure... Yeah, you know, stand on the other side of... Well and sort of holds his staff up, shaking his skulls, and Gerhard just stands there with the sword that killed their leader in his hands, and they all just start going... Arr. They all start melting back into the woods as they've got more important shit to do, like figure out who their new leader is, as they all start pulling back and into the woods. And it's eventually lightning crashes and you're standing alone in this field and you can hear the <laughs> of your buddy at your feet all right medical doctor hey, hey drunky yeah. yeah drunk doctors are a dangerous thing wait but wait what I other choice do we... okay i have first aid <laughs> <laughs> at least let me uh, like uh check out and see what's going i on. also have I also have biology, if that's any help. No, first aid's fine. Okay, first aid. Uh, percentile, right? Yeah. Yeah. I look forward. What kind of dice did you get him, Hunger? Just some basic white and blue dice. White dice, wood, blue uh, numbers. Nice. I, got him a, I got him a complete set. They were like seven pounds. I tell you, they're so cheap, those Perfect. guys. Yeah, I was looking. Which I don't have a job right play. now. I'm so sorry. It's okay, man. Don't worry about it. You're a new, you're a new gamer, man. It's it's the it's party. Tradition. It's, it's yes. the oh, no. It's the party's job. Uh, I failed it. I got 66 on 30. You do, you're like trying to hold it, and like bloods, and his eyes are looking at you, and you can see like he realizes he's dying. Let me try because I'm. A, I'm sorry. Person. I'm trying. Please. Zero six. <laughs> Zero six bitches. <laughs> Basically, so Philip gets in there and pinches off the, the fucking artery to hold the blood in, but you realize this is not a fix. This is a stopgap. You need to heal him somehow. We need the 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 girl. You don't know the girl can do shit. You didn't I see was that. there when she was did doing I, did it. I, with... did, I, did I describe to you what happened? No, I described to the man with the magic site what happened, sir. All you saw was her holding his hand and chanting. That's all you saw. Yeah. I was there when he, she fixed up Matt, uh, Kirby, though, so I know she's better at this than me. She can stitch, yeah. That's fair. I'll give you that one. Okay. What are you doing, Lorlarian? You're the you're the, the voice of this group. I look at the girl. Um Esmeré, is there anything you can do for him? There will be a cost. I am willing to pay it. You will not be the one who pay it. I will be the one who pays the price, but I will do this for him. And she goes over and she sort of just pushes herself between Navari and Philip, puts her hands over his throat, and let's see if she can do this. And she starts chanting. Are you going to watch, or are you going to just let it happen as it happens, Lalorian? I'm just watching. Are you are you not going to watch, watch? You're just going to let it happen, or are you going to see the price she pays? Uh, sure. I'll lift the bill. And... So again, you see the three women there. And it's at this moment you realize they remind you of the three women at the Three Sisters bo uh, battlefield, that, that large stone thing that, you know, has got the three women on it um, who have names that I can't remember right now. And um, you see her holding the hands and you see them, they turn away from her and then she just reaches her hand behind her to them. They turn back and you watch as they take a piece of her life out of her soul. And then it flows back in and she starts healing him. You watch Philip as the wound in his neck starts knitting itself. And the flesh and bone and all of that just like starts covering and growing back. And then eventually there's just a pink scar patch, uh, scar patch with no um, fur. But he is no longer bleeding out, but he is fully unconscious. And then she just collapses head first onto his chest. I pick her up. And give her the lock. Lockwald? Yeah. So Philip hands you the unconscious Esmeray. I take her and look back at the party. I don't think we're in any shape to go anywhere tonight. We should bother the place up and take watch of God and rest here. And then we will set out first light. 
So you guys are going back into the inn? Yes. Okay. The roadhouse. The roadhouse. We shall leave at the crack of noon. So, uh, Kirby, you see them all come back in, bloodied, tired, wet, dragging in an unconscious, well, carrying in an unconscious Esmeré, and between Devere and uh, Ishmataro, and actually, I imagine Bokht is carrying the uh, the beast man. They all come back in, put him down on a table, and all just sort of sit down. And uh, immediately, uh, Perrin runs over and starts cleaning you, Devere, and just start wiping the blood off of your armor and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just doing what he's supposed to do uh, as uh, you, Kirby, stand in the kitchen door looking at them. So when they, when they come in during that time, I was going to make sure that uh, Mr. Boar's head is uh, is comfortable. I mean, for lack of a better term. Sure. Uh, uh, other than that, maybe slap his face a couple times, like, wake up, dude, you know, whatever. Oh, no, he's out. We got to run. Yeah. Okay. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I was waiting for something to bust down the door and try to eat me, so. Yeah, exactly. So you're just like, yeah. but they're there, and they look alive. What happened? We beat the beast of it. Yeah. Right bought, bought the doors, front and back. We all sleep in this room tonight. But you beat the beastmen. Yeah. But the cost was nearly too great. And they might be back in greater numbers. Did you ever have a doubt? <laughs> it was well, me. and Sir Gerard didn't. I can tell you that. I drove them off with my mighty staff. Young so Nefri. You need to get some rest, sir. Sleep it off. Yeah. Yes. Young Nefri, you'll learn that doubt is something that you need to get used to but you must overcome i, I don't have any doubts i doubted i overcame i, I find a nice piece of floor i've just... got enough doubts with my father thank you <laughs> Gerhard, I, Gerhard, Gerhard clearly doubted he overcame i'm gonna push the table to the door you know, okay. the one that i flipped over pushed the, uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, Perrin. Perrin. Perrin, my armor doesn't need any more work. Um, could you go and um, fetch the serving wench? Um, I'll be need ale. Oh, no, uh, not now. El -dom, el -dom. I, I get ill. I get ill. And he, and he runs behind the thing and grabs the tank, brings ale over and puts it on the other table. And uh, with the gentle strains of Philip's snores... Um, you all buckle down and listen to the storm cover the night. All right, all right, uh, all right enough. Jesus. Remember that thing last week where you were so proud about how serious you could role play? Remember that? Uh, I am seriously role playing. I'm drunk right. and I farted in my sleep. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and with that, we will put the session on hold until one month from now. Please send me your votes on Discord for the extra ex uh, for the MVP of the night. We can't vote on it now. Yeah, on Discord, send me a private message with your vote. Oh, okay, fine. You can vote out loud, Hungar, because Discord. No, it's 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 fine. No, no, it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. I Just... actually want to think about it. Oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I want a moment too. No worries. Take your time. Might help if I reopen Discord, eh? It sucks that we can only vote for one. <laughs> I know. Indeed. It's almost like I designed it with that purpose in mind. Are we still live? Yes, we're still live, gentlemen. Yeah. All right. Right, I've sent you it there. Okay. All right. Just waiting on one, and then we'll have them all. There we go. All right, Cody, who did you vote for and why? I voted for Navri uh, because I didn't realize last time that he had never played role-playing games before or very new to it, and so far he's doing a really, really good job playing that character, and that interaction with his father was very good. So um, 
props, dude. You're doing great. Thank Welcome you. To the fold. Appreciate it. Congratulations on your first dice set. <laughs> Let's go. Thanks, one guy. Favorite moment, Cody? Favorite moment was actually probably um, Sir Gerard's interaction with the night captain. That was uh, really humiliating. And <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, John played it really well. Like, he role played that situation really well with that old moment. And I really liked it. I, it agree. Really I agree 100%. All right, John, who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Max again. I thought Max uh, should have just edged it last week. I thought he's. I think he's been very solid again tonight. Again, some ex some excellent one-liners, and he's still playing that um, that innocent peasant boy who's unsure of his own abilities. I liked that bit where he was being her heralded as a hero when he didn't realize it. Yeah. Um, right at the start of the session, um, he didn't. It, it, he he played that naivety of the. The unknown hero, very well. Okay, that works. Favorite moment? Um, I think I I liked the way Malachi thought and thought and thought and thought yeah. and thought and then and then went fuck it yeah. <laughs> and just and just and just went for it and just went for it. I think that was it. I think that was a, a real highlight. We all just, we, we had to go and join it. That, that show of bravery. No, it was really it was good. It built the tension really well too. I felt yes. so that was nice. Uh, all right, uh, Max, who'd you vote for and why? Uh, I had to break a tie. That's uh, I'm just going to say that up front. But I ended up voting for uh, the or, 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 uh, Devere. Um, there are a few reasons for that. One, I just think that he had more of a presence in this one than Navri because Navri was my very, very, very close second choice. But um, there was you'll get got to do more I like like there's more involved with him in this one but i absolutely loved i mean uh jim cody already said it but uh the interaction with the night captain but even beyond that um the concept like i've got to be a knight but i'm just a dumb merchant uh, i've got to be a knight i've got to show some honor i've got to do this like even when he was yelling we're well, not yelling but you know talking to my character like hey you know, this is what we've got to do. I, I like how he balances that steadfastness with, <laughs> you know, I am just a merchant. I'm not going to, you know, um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, but my favorite moment uh, actually was 100% uh, was uh, Navari with uh, with the dad. Okay. I, I love that interaction between uh, the two because he didn't just say, screw you, dad, but he was like, you know what? I, I've got I've got to sow my own oats here at the same time, and you know I thought actually between both of you, uh, his game master and him, that that interaction was uh, I liked the way it went down. Very cool. Thank you. I channeled my real wife, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hunger. Who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Navari for oh. the uh, the the entire interaction with his dad. He role played that very very well. It, it 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 was just some really good stuff, and he was really. It seemed like he was really into and in, in his character at that moment, and I really found that just fantastic role play. Now, my favorite part was when the dude rubbed on Gerard's armor <laughs> and called it weak, and the way that Gerard played off with that when he came back, he's like. Does this armor look okay? Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought <laughs> that just gave me so much to work with the entire show. Yeah, hey, that, that was a bone you chewed well. Yeah. I, I, beat that, I beat that horse to death, baby. Mm, Absolutely. For real. Why not? All right, Malachi, who'd you vote for and why? I vote for Max. I thought over the entirety of the session, he had the best role playing, hands down. Okay. Just a lot of the little things I noticed. All right. And I want to be known favorite? as the one-liner guy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What was your favorite it's moment? It's not just the one-liners, though. It's not just no, it's the not. It's not. I'm going to get to that. Don't worry. <laughs> Navri okay. with his father. I thought that you was like that scene? Okay. Yeah. And I just want to say everyone that. liked that interaction that much, really. It felt real. Before I attacked the beast man, what was going through my head was whether to honor what he was doing or save him. <laughs> Yeah, because that's, that's that's like that's an Ostrati fucking dilemma right there, you know. He's chosen his fate. God has decided it. But then, 
God let you see his chest moving. So what does God yeah. want you to do? You know, it's like it's this amazing can I fucking loved it, man. But we'll talk about that. All right. That's great. Come on, who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Hunger um, as my MVP for today, simply because I feel like at every like crucial moment, he always had something to say, which either furthered the plot or just made us all laugh, which I think is important because at the end of the day, this is about having fun. Yes. Okay. Fair. And what's uh, your favorite, my favorite moment? moment uh, I agree with Hunger when um, Sir Gerard is really self conscious about his armor. <laughs> that was quite funny. The gift that <laughs> keep on giving, yes. Fair. But even I played into it at one point. Well, I like that he keeps calling him Sir Rusty. Um, <laughs> okay, so I think, I think it's I think it says something that we've had such a widespread of votes. It shows yes. Just, yep. That, that, yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations, Iman. You got three votes. You're the winner tonight. So, congratulations. You'll get a 10% bonus. Let's go! <laughs> Wolverine! The, the newbie got the MVP. There we go. Your, your um, prize is your own set of dice coming to you by UK Mail Service. Royal Mail, Legend. sir. The Royal Mail. Let's go. All right. I'll see you next year. Let's go. <laughs> it's coming to Intellectual Quandary. <laughs> All right. Oh, you played uh, as, oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Cody, I think you really had a task ahead of you tonight to keep this this train moving. <laughs> and I like the fact that there were moments where Laurelin just stood there processing, just trying to get his brain around everything. It was really fun watching you do that. Uh, and I, I, I played a little dirty pool by having your little seer, you know, do something, you know, like, you know, like pushing you. Because I could see, like, he was just like, because he's the wise man, but this was a very unwise situation to be stuck in. And I love that your option was, we run, go, let's go, leave, we're leaving, we're going, we're leaving. Like, I loved that. You didn't, we hold the line, we be heroes. Remember, no, it was like, we get the fuck out. We GTFO now. And I was, I, I really loved that a lot. Uh, I love the voice lace. you got. I love the voice you got for the character. I think you're doing a great job with them. And I'm, there's some shit coming up for you that I'm really looking forward to see how you're going to handle it. So well done. It's like, oh man. <laughs> John, I said it. You're the gift that keeps on giving. All I have to do is just ting and then just watch it reverberate through the rest of the session. Like, it's amazing. Like, honest to God, guys, everyone is made. Like, this is a great group. I'm really, the second time in a row, I'm blown away by this group. Okay. But, John, Jesus Christ, man. Like, you take a little piece of meat and turn it into a meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're really, like, I'm impressed, brother. Like, the way you fucking get in there, really good. That said, Max, holy fuck. I did not expect Kirby to sit out the entire fight. I was, that, that impressed the shit out of me. That he's like, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm not doing none of that shit. Nope, fuck that. I'm staying where it's safe. Fuck, I love that. You got these two bonehead knights who are like, we must do what's noble and knights and protect the people. And you've got the fucking box who's like, um, I kill for God. You got the drunk priest, and then you got the wise man who's like, we work as a team. And you're just like, fuck this. I'm going to die. I <laughs> love it. It's really well done. I really like what you're doing with the character. And we need new art because he doesn't, he plays so interesting <laughs> now. Yeah, that's true. Hungar, yep. you are going to die. I want you to know this. <laughs> Your character is, is going to get you killed, but God favors the foolish, it appears. And as someone said, you had that Philip drinking Doc Holiday moment, which was really nice. And I love that you're full feed into this character. And I do echo something that uh, Iman said, which is you either further the plot or you bring levity to the moment because that's what you told me you wanted to play. You wanted to play a good hearted guy who's fun to be around. It's kind of the friar tuck of the group. And you've been doing that. So I really, really like that. That's awesome. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make the game fun for everybody. And if furthering the plot or make a joke. Yep. No, you're doing good. Malachi, yes, I now know who Gerhard is. And I think you do too. And I think that was the interesting thing. I think you hit that moment where you had to decide who this character yeah. was going to be. Who is Gerhard going to be as a person? <laughs> and you made your decision. And now you move forward from there. And that was awesome. It was fucking like that's what role playing is all about is a moment like that. I yeah. fucking envy you getting to have it. It was really cool. 
And then our little MVP, Mr. <laughs> Navari. Well, I got bad news for you, buddy. I ain't taking it easy on you at all moving forward because you've shown me you've got the chops to play with the big boys. So oh, I wait, but his internet just Oh, you really out. think so? I really, you really think, think so. so. I think everybody agrees with me that you've shown that you've stepped up, you've been, you've been measured, you've been assessed, and you mm -hmm. have been found not wanting. You are there. So let's see where it goes from here. You guys are too sweet. You guys are honestly the best. Now, now if you if you sucked, I would straight up tell you you sucked, bro. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you I mean, would. These, okay guys, these guys, would these okay guys, these guys know. I pulled no punches. You've not watched one of my shows yet, have you? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any final thoughts or discussion or words anybody wants to say? Any any opinions? Any feelings? Go ahead. Let's get it out. Let's get it all done. Lovely and variety of accents and voices there. Amazing as always. Thank you. I, I, I thought the game rent went really well from the GMing to the players. I really, really enjoyed this. It, it's gone on for three and a half hours, and it doesn't seem that long. Ago. Yeah, it doesn't. I know I got a lot of stuff to do tonight. Now I'm starting to think about that, but I wasn't during the game. But uh, uh, great, great game from Bear and uh, amazing players. I'm having, you know, I, I know I got a couple of votes today, whatever, but I still feel like I'm working up to your guys' level right now. So it, it was it was hard between you and Amon this this time. It, it's I had to think about. That's why I was last. Yeah, well, because, uh, well uh, between Navar for me, between Navari and Sir Devere, really, it was just that Devere had more in the episode as a, as a whole. That that's really what it came down to, kind of that tiebreaker. He just had more there, uh, and it wasn't through any fault of anybody. It's just the way it happened, and I was like, that's what broke the tie for me. It's also the veteran player I, coming I through with he you. sees his opportunity because he sees them, so he takes those opportunities as instinctually as a role player, right? Iman will get there. He's learning those instincts right now that we all take for granted. So it's uh, that's the only difference there. Yeah, I, if anyone I, I, needs to raise that level to match you, it's me. No oh, shut up. According to you guys stop. today, apparently. Okay. Listen, right, the so. two corners need to stop fucking bitching about how they're not there yet. You're there. <laughs> I promise I'm, both of you. I'm, I must say, Iman's been playing in my Tuesday Call of Cthulhu game, and he's been doing a good job. So you, you wouldn't know he was a new a new player. So, mm -hmm. and, and good call with the wax for the earplug I, there. I, was, <laughs> I feel something. like a large part of it is like how mentally invested you are. And for these yeah. sessions, like I'm no. fully in, you know, so... I, I would agree. I apologize for the Wi-Fi issues, out. by the way. Oh, well, no, <laughs> don't worry about it. I jumped into this character feet first, man. I was like, cannonball. No, you sure you know. <laughs> Malachi, I'm have any a... thoughts? No, I didn't. I didn't, um, I didn't feel like I did my best tonight, but I'll, I'll improve. You did good. You did great. You did good. Cody, what are, you you right. herded cats. That should be worth <laughs> something, right yeah. there. You yeah. seriously herded I, cats. I, I, I'm the worst player to be the leader first off I know, I, it's I, hilarious yeah, yeah. first off i'm not a player very often so this is a rare moment and when i am the player i'm never the leader so uh being thrown in this situation is a real challenge and i like a challenge i'm not there with this character yet was not a great session for me but it'll be better next time you wow. did fantastic hurting us idiots we're running <laughs> all over the damn place I think, like a bunch of no, I, think it plays, I think it plays really well, Cody. Look at it from this point of view. Here's a guy who has spent most of his time alone, studying, being this wise wizard who wanders around and talks to people. And now suddenly he's got a quest, he's got a task, and he's got a whole bunch of strong personalities to govern over. And he's put himself in the position of, I am the leader of these people. I must know what to do at all times, which is what Cody has chosen as a player. Meanwhile, you've got Devere, you've got Bach, you've got Philip, you've got all these other people that can help him but he hasn't figured that out yet, has he? He hasn't figured out that these people are actually not tools, they're aids. He, they can help them. So I think I think you're doing fine. I, I understand what you're saying, by the way. I feel you on that. It's exactly how I felt in your game, by the way. <laughs> you know, I know that feeling. I know that feeling well. Really, like, I could have done so much better. What the fuck? But I think from an outside person looking, you did fine. You did mm -hmm. good. Uh, I think that is game you did. Taking that slumber spell away from you, though. Jesus Christ, that thing's a <laughs> carpet of adhesion. Spam that, spam, spam that button. <laughs> All right, Malachi, any uh, final thoughts or any comments? Well, you had fun, though? <laughs> yep. I had a few words. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I had a fucking blast. I'm looking forward to next month. We'll let you guys know the date when we work it all out between all of us. But otherwise, I am good to go. So everyone who watched us tonight across all fucking channels, of which there were a lot, thank you so much. It was really fun. We had 50-odd viewers the entire time we played. Oh, wow. Think about that. Like 50 people were watching. To watch a Let's Play. Wow. To watch a fucking three-and-a-half-hour Let's Play. We're only down to 46 since we started the wrap-up. Now the numbers are Yeah. But Thank, you know. Thanks a lot, guys, for, like, I've, I've had four watching pretty much the whole game. Yeah. I, so, I, I mean, look, I'm sure some of you just turned it on and went and, you know, did dishes, but that's fine. It's, it's <laughs> Thanks for the even, views. Even, even if you yeah. were listening to us, it was a great thing. Thank you all so much for hanging out. If you are watching this on the replay or you were here live and now the comment section's open, tell us who your MVP was. Tell us what your... Um, uh, favorite moment was, and keep in mind, next session they step into Escane. Civilization is going to be behind them now, and I think you got a little bit of a taste of what the world you're stepping into looks like tonight. So, uh, <laughs> and I make this abundantly clear I will not hesitate to let the dice kill anybody. anybody. Yeah, it nearly happened to me, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we have a rule to look up, don't we? Yeah, we got lots of things to look up. All right, peace, love, geek. Subscribe to GM Cody. Subscribe to Ye Old Geek. Subscribe to Legion of Myth. Subscribe to Hungar. Subscribe to Malachi of the OSR. And subscribe to Intellectual Quandary. And if you enjoy what we're doing here at the uh, Society of Role Playing Gamers, give us a sub if it makes you happy. Okay. See you guys in a month. Be good. Be bad. But don't be sad.